Let's get ready to rumble! الزنا لا يحرم لو واحد زنى بامرأة وحملت منه يقول لك إن هذا الماء غير محرم يعني إيه غير محرم يعني دي مش بنته يعني إيه برضو مش فاهم يا عم الشيخ يعني هل يجوز له نكاحها قال لك أي يتجوزها عادي دي بنته قال لك مين اللي قال بنته هي لا بنته لا شرعا ولا شيء ما مش بنت لن تنسب له أصلا ولما واحد يزني بواحدة ويخلف منها بنت تكتب باسمه باسم الزاني لا أبدا أبدا يبقى مش بنته يعني قتل المرتد مو عشان يصير مسلم المرتد مرتكب لجرم مثل الزاني الزاني إذا كان محصنا يرجم إذا كان غير محصن يجلد السارق إذا اجتمعت شروط قطع اليد قطعت يده القاتل يقتل فهذه عقوبات هذه عقوبات لهؤلاء العمل الذي قاموا به ومنها المرتد إذا ارتد يقتل إذا تاب من الردة يترك إن هو يعاقب على هذا الفعل أن فيه استهتار بهذا الدين فيعاقب على هذا العمل كما لو سب الرسول أو سب الله جل وعلا أو كذا فإنه يقتل لهذا الفعل وليس لأجل أن نغصبه على الإسلام الإسلام يعني لا يحتاج ولا يريد يعني مرتزقة يعني صير مسلم ولا ذبحناك ولا لا لا ما نريد مرتزقة الكف أول شيء السبي لا يكون إلا الكفار لا يجوز سبي مؤمن يعني لا يجوز يكون قتال بين مسلمين مثلا لأي سبب من الأسباب الفتن التي تحدث يكون قتال بين المسلمين لا يجوز السبي أبدا السبي لا يكون إلا الكافر لا يسبى المسلم أبدا وإنما يسبى الكافر وأنا أرجو أن الإنسان لا يخجل من دينه و يقول لا هذا قبل والإسلام لا يدعو إلى هذا لا كن, كن قويا في دينك أظهر دينك نعم هذا ديني نعم الذي لا يرضى أن يعبد الله تبارك وتعالى فإنه يستعبد أو يدفع الجزية أو يدخل في الإسلام أو يقاتل ه- هذه الأحوال الأربعة أبدا لا يوجد حال خامس لذا أول ما يدعى الإنسان يدعى الإسلام يقول أعبد, ال- أعبد الله تبارك وتعالى الله خلقك لتعبده فإذا قال لا أريد أن أعبد الله تبارك نقول تعيش في أرض الله ولا تعبده ادفع الجزية نقول ولن أدفع الجزية فإذا رفض أن يعبد الله ورفض أن يدفع الجزية نقول له إذا ما لنا معك إلا القتال فنقاتله لأجل هذا فإن قتلناه فهو في النار وإن أسرناه فهو من السبي يصير عبدا رغما عنه لما رفض أن يكون عبدا مكرما باختياره فسيكون عبدا حقيرا بدون اختياره هكذا هو الأمر بالنسبة للذين لا يعبدون الله تبارك وهذا يعني لا تشفقوا عليهم هؤلاء كفار هؤلاء يرفضون أن يعبدوا الله تبارك وتعالى يرفضون أمر الله جل وعلا يعادون الله يسبون الله جل وعلا فالإنسان لا تأخذه الشفقة على أعداء الله على ناس هم معتدون And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life Nothing boy, you're finished already, look at me Look at me, you know you're done, you are Ali Ali Wallahi, every single land, every single country, Wallahi with all their governments and all their military force and all their might and all their science and all their money and all their know-how all with the exception of none every country every tree every grain of sand every mountain every river 
Every ocean, every ocean, wallahi, every star, every sun, every moon, every single planet, every single angel, the billions and billions and billions of angels, all of them, with the exception of none, Mikael, Jibrail, Israfil, all the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven, the fourth heaven, the fifth heaven, the sixth heaven, the seventh heaven, the ocean above it, the eight that carry the flag of Dude, the Lord, the, the hearts of Allah, all are dead, all are dead. Oh. Ali. Ali. Well, hello, hello, we are live on air. Welcome everybody, God bless you. Hello, hello. Muslims, we are live on air. Now you, it is for you possible to take us down, man, to shut down our YouTube channels. That's what you want, right? You want us to stop. So I want a call from you, man. Hello, guys. Welcome. God bless you. God bless your families. Wow, we didn't start yet and we already got amazing um, super chats. Uh, a, sh a big shout out to our brother, Walter for his amazing super chat god bless you my friend god bless your families uh, he says and i quote muslims you can call rc on skype the rob christian Ex exactly if there is a muslim you can call us live on air my skype id is the rob christian and king buddy also thank you for your amazing super chat king buddy says and i quote have a bet a work that the first muslim caller can't go five minutes without lying what else is new? Story of my life, brother. Story of my life. Don't let me down, religion of pieces. Uh, I mean peace. <laughs> Islam is peace. Exactly. Welcome, everybody. We are live on air. Let me open my Skype. Uh, as you know, the basic rule, guys. Only Muslims can call us when we are teaching. So my Skype is open. Before we actually start, guys, I want to ask you to pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So our live stream can be blessed. Also, don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. So I hope Muslims are going to call us. Let us pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the name above all names. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, please bless our beloved audience and subscribers. Thank you for your grace. Jesus, we truly believe that you are risen and you are risen indeed. al Messiah qam, haqqan qam, Christos anesti. Jesus, you are truly risen. Thank you for your ultimate gift, Lord. Thank you for your grace that saved us from eternal damnation, from eternal death. And thank you for this amazing and lovely audience and subscribers who are always here to support our ministry day in day out for many months now amazing guys without you we cannot do this so thank you lord for this these people these people that i call my family in christ please bless them and their families and loved ones and please lord jesus keep all of us healthy and safe especially from the spread of this Disgusting evil, Corona virus, which is a very dangerous virus for any, any soul. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you so that you can direct our words, thoughts, and actions. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into any discouragement, any taqiyya makar of Allah, Satan, any deception, Lord, lies, or any doubt. Please Allow us to honor you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light on all of us. Please, Lord Jesus, including the Muslims who might be in need, who might be here seeking for the truth, because only and only the truth can set them free. Please, Lord, please, Jesus, open their eyes so also they can be saved as we are saved through your holy blood. Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today and guide me so I can speak the truth, nothing but the truth, without any error or any shame. And Lord, 
please give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen, Amen. Welcome everybody, we are live on air. On this very live show, we will have the opportunity today to refute Yasser Qadi. Uh, and I also saw uh, that Adnan Rashid made a video about it and he tried to, <laughs> uh, you know, do damage control that Yasser Qadi did, right? With Muhammad Hijab. So you will see that instead of doing damage control, you know, instead of fixing the problem, you know, doing damage control, the damage is already done. He made it even more worse. He made, he made it even more worse for the Muslim Ummah, for the Muslim nation. And you will see why. On top of that, anything that we can find in the Muslim sources, either it's the Sunnah or the Quran, we will use it against the fake prophet of Islam, a prophet with an eye, right? The prophet, the, the prophet with an eye of Islam in the court of law. So I hope that his Allah is going to be awake to save him from our hands. So I hope that Allah is going to be present as the attorney of Muhammad during today's hearing to defend his last seal of all the prophets in the court of law. So if there are Muslims guys, uh, please I want to ask the admins to give the Skype ID in the live chat so the Muslims can call us. If you are a Christian, you have to wait. We'll see if going to accept any calls from Christians after we are done teaching. So only Muslims, only the guests can call guys. We received another super chat, wow. This time from our dear brother, uh, the newborn brother in Christ, Rory the Husky. Uh, Rory, Rory says, Rob Christian, I'm going to give you a free Arabic lessons. Your career is over. <laughs> Muhammad Hijab is a joke. Guys, uh, uh, I have wonderful news. Uh, brother Rory, uh, after my last live show, remember my last live show? Uh, Rory asked me uh, to pray with him in private and that's what I did. I went to Discord and I took our brother here in a private prayer with me and he accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior from his heart from his mouth so he prayed after me and now he's a newborn dear brother in Christ how many Muslims are are leaving Islam guys lately I mean I think Islam Muslims your boat is sinking Jump out of it before you drown with that sinking boat that we call Islam. Remember what Imam Bil Bilal Phillips said from Canada. It's going to be a tsunami of apostates. An avalanche. It will knock us over, brother. It's, uh, the boat, your boat is sinking, man. You can do all kind of damage control like these people, right? But, you know, it's over. It's game over for you, uh, Either you're going to sink with that boat, you're going to stay blind, deaf and mute, or you're going to leave Islam before it drowns together with you and you come back home to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the name above all names, the King of Kings. So let us uh, start guys, let me drink something, small sip before we start, I have really... <clears throat> You know, I, I've done a lot of live shows and videos lately, maybe you noticed. We know that Christian Prince, our dear brother Christian Prince, is not going live for a couple of days. So let, I thought, hey, let us fill the gap. Maybe we can step in, you know, help each other out. But I am noticing that my voice is really, you know, <laughs> my, my throat. I need to drink a lot, but you know, it's it's not stopping us to do what we do, right guys? So thank you for being here without you. We cannot do this guys. Make sure to spread the word that we are live and uh, we're going to start. So guys, have you have you watched my video that I uh, uploaded a couple hours ago about this uh, this guy? <laughs> have you seen it? I hope you, you enjoyed it, man. Yeah. One of our dear friends uh, on YouTube, he did a lot of editing and I edited my last 
stuff inside it and you know i thought this was one of the <laughs> most funniest videos that we did guys <laughs> honest to god was, you know i was laughing <laughs> when i was editing and, and whatnot oh man oh man mimi hijab man mimi hijab you must be proud about your uh, boyfriend uh, farid farida you know yeah i mean uh, this guy according to the muslims he's a hot shot i mean you saw the video man I mean, I, I, I would, I would be proud, Muslim. If I was a fan of such people, I would be, I would be proud, man. These people are the ones who are doing the damage control. You know, the, the your boat is sinking, man. Face it, it's over. It's game over. Farid exposed CP. Yeah, in in what in what of your dreams? When in what kind of dreams you saw it, uh, Mister uh, Prostrate, Mister Prostrate? Uh, I need. I think you should. Uh, let me give you an advice. Go see a doctor if you have issues with your prostate, man. I mean, come on, man. Go see a doctor, man. Uh, your name. Uh, I don't know, man. I hope. I hope there's nothing wrong with you, man. But you need to lay down the pipe, son. I'm not sure what you have been smoking. You and what army are going to refute Mr. Christian Prince, the living legend, man? You and what army? Good luck with that, you know, yeah, talk is cheap, man. I mean, guys, have you ever seen this guy debate? I never seen any debate of him. I mean, you have seen us debate hundreds and hundreds of times. I mean, if you're from the Paul Talk era and maybe you've heard about me or Christian Prince and, uh, you know, uh, David Wood. How many times have you seen him? Have you seen this? I think he's one, you know, five, five feet tall or something, this guy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a small dude, man. Have you have you seen this guy? Have you seen this guy? Honest to God, have you seen a debate of, by him? So, uh, do you think this guy would stand the chance with uh, someone like me or Christian Prince? <laughs> Talk is cheap, man. I mean, everybody can do uh, response videos. Let him call us. We'll see what will happen to him. Anyway, guys. Anyway, <clears throat> I hope you saw the video. Let's see if I can find uh, the stuff that I want to talk about today. Uh, and it's one of the videos. Guys, maybe you saw the compilation video that I made about Yasser Qadi. Uh, we, 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 you know, I did a lot of videos lately. But I actually didn't really watch it, to be honest with you. I only, you know, I did some editing and I added uh, stuff from Al Fadi. Uh, uh, you know, another part from my live show with uh, Sister Hartoon about uh, the Hafs Quran, the disasters that we went through in the Hafs Quran of today, and also from our dear brother Jay Smith. Yeah, dear brother Jay Smith. And I actually didn't really watch the video, but then I, I was like, let me go through it a little bit. And when I played it, from the first minute, I already found the lies of Yasser Qadi. The lies of this l deceiver, this evil son of Satan. I'm not going to talk about this kid here. This kid is a joke. But this guy, right? He has a PhD, right? He studied Islam from, uh, you know, uh, he, he, I, if I'm not mistaken and if I am heard it correctly, he got his PhD in Yale. He even went to Medina to study in Medina, right? So uh, this guy supposedly should know what he's saying, right? So let us see from the very first minute. You know, uh, to be honest with you, I don't have time to watch one hour, a complete hour or let alone one hour and 46 minutes. And we know that this guy, this comeback here that you see here, he took 30 minutes out of the original discussion. If you go to his YouTube channel, you'll see that the original video is one hour and 46 minutes. One hour and 46 minutes. This guy uploads a video, the same interview video, and he cuts 30 minutes out of it. Why, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mimi? Uh, Mimi, Mimi. Why are you such a scumbag? Why are you deceiving your audience? Why are you cutting off 30 minutes from the video? Mm. Ah, now we know why you want to do damage control after the damage has been done all right now we understand you know the damage is done 
you know, so you have to, afterwards, you have to do some damage control to deceive your audience so they cannot see the disasters that were spoken about during that interview. Right, Mr. Mimi Hijab? Yeah, I know, guys, I know. <clears throat> My voice is not what it is, but, you know, this happens when you talk hours and hours and hours on a live show. But we will, we are here anyway, guys. Let us let us do this. Let me play the video. And this is from the very first minute of the interview. So let us see. All right. This is the video, right, guys? You, maybe a lot of you have seen it, right? You see the first minute, and I already found a lie from this guy. Forget, forget about Mimi Hijab, the deceiver who cut 30 minutes out of the th original video. No, this guy. I'm going to grab him by his beard. Watch. I'm going, I'm going to grab him by his beard because when we catch you with a lie, we will not let go, brother. I'm like a, a pit bull, man. <laughs> right? <laughs> so when I catch you with a lie, I'm going to spank you and barbecue you and serve you for everybody to see. And you are my witnesses, guys. Watch. Let me play the video. Guys, put on your headsets and make sure to listen carefully to what this deceiver, what he's going to say. Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa Firstly, thank you for... Um, yeah, Allah uh, is praying on, uh, on Muhammad. Yeah. Me. Okay. I, I really appreciated your very um, probing questions last time. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mashallah, I like about you that you are asking uh, relevant questions uh, to an audience that I think is a little bit more niche audience because see some of these topics should not be like the race topic okay we can discuss but uh, ah, don't talk about uh, damaging stuff right do it in private it, uh, yeah to give these more detailed questions so I appreciate your honesty uh, yeah. and your willingness to, to, to dialogue in this regard uh, with yeah. regards to the race issue subhanallah I mean it's a very interesting time to see what is going on in this country uh -huh. and uh, I gave a khutbah recently also had an interview with Imam Zaid Shaka uh, you know and those are uh -huh. online and one uh -huh. thing that uh, really struck me even when I was doing the Sira research and it struck me even mm -hmm. back then 10 years ago mm -hmm. the uh, the importance that Islam stressed on this issue of all peoples being equal and I'll just give you what did he say did you hear what he just said guys this is the very first minute right that he already started. Look what he said. Let me go back a little bit. Of all peoples being equal. And I'll... Wow. That's the first time I heard of the word equal in Islam. All the people are equal. That's what he's saying. I'll Let me play him. You know, two simple mm -hmm. examples that, you know, we all know that Islam came to eliminate racism. We all know. <laughs> Guys, you really need to hear this and try not to laugh. Watch. The... Uh, the importance yes. that Islam stressed on this issue of all peoples being equal. And I'll just people being you know, equal. Simple examples that, you know, we all know that Islam came to eliminate racism. We all know. You're a liar. You're an evil son of Satan. You are a deceiver. And what you just said is nothing but taqiyya. I mean, look at his face, man. This is the face of a jinn, man. I know, Muslims. Uh, I mean, this guy truly truly has no shame mr uh, mr yasser qadi you truly have no shame you have no honor and you have no dignity since when are muslims according to islam equal with jews and christians and, and, and let alone atheist unbelievers since when did that happen equal racism race <laughs> you heard him guys right islam removes racism Islam is against racism. You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. Watch how we're going to spank this evil liar. I'm not going to talk about this idiot here that you see here. I'm to going to grab this guy by his beard and show what kind of liar he is. Watch. Chapter 59. Let me drink something. Chapter 59, Ayah 20. Those destined for the fire and those destined for paradise cannot be alike. Do you see how Yasser Qadi just called his own Allah and Prophet liars, scumbags and deceivers? Or was he using taqiyya? I mean this guy claims to, to have a PhD in Islam. PhD Sheikh. Why are you lying so blatantly? Blatant lie. 
No shame, no honor, no dignity. You evil son of Satan. Chapter 59, Ayah 20. Any Muslim who dares to call me and refute me about this Ayah? PhD from Yale. Yeah, this, this guy. This guy claims to have a PhD in Islam, man. Yasir Qadi, do you have any shame? No. Because, I mean, how would Muslims who claim to be Imams to have any shame or any dignity and lie, blatant lie without any shame, saying that Islam makes everyone equal? Equal? Is this ayah? Is this ayah da'if, Mr. Yasir Qadi? Mr. Yasir Qadi, is uh, this ayah da'if, brother? Is this ayah da'if? Any Muslim? Any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call me and say this ayah is da'if? Do you have the courage to agree with Yasir Qadi and say that this ayah is da'if? Any Muslim? Any Muslim? Ah, we have four Muslims, at least, because we have four dislikes. Any Muslim from those four Muslims who are watching, do you have the courage to call me and defend the lie of Yasir Qadi? Of, or are you going to throw him under the bus? Or are you going to say this ayah is da'if that you see here on the screen? Okay, this well, thank you for your advice, brother. I will. Well, uh, this ayah, guys, I think this ayah is da'if. What do you think? Huh? They cannot be alike. Those destined for the fire and those destined for the paradise. So these people are the Jews and the Christians and the atheists and the Hindus. They cannot be alike with the Muslims. Remember, the Muslims will go to the brothel of Allah, the pimp Allah, you know, his sex paradise. Those are the Muslims. They cannot be alike. So what equality are you talking about, you evil liar, son of Satan? We are nejis, we are filthy. Chapter 9, Ayah 28. You heard him right, guys? You heard him right? Equal. Every, every people is equal. People are equal according to this guy. And he even gave a sermon, right? A khutbah about it. Lying about it publicly. <laughs> Where are the Muslims who are going to go and grab him by his beard? Take him by his beard, grab him over the floor, take him with his beard over the floor, clean the floor with him and his lies and his beard. You see, Muslims have no shame. And they actually never listen and catch these liars and deceivers by their beard. I mean, if I was a Christian, guys, honest to God, you're, you're my witness, guys. Honest to God. If Rob Christian is going to lie about Christianity, life on air, or let's say Christian Prince, or let's say Mr. David Wood, Dr. David Wood, how many people, how many Christians will immediately unsubscribe from our YouTube channels? When you catch us with a lie, a blatant lie? Uh, guys, I'm asking you, ask, I'm asking you. Our dear viewers, Christians, brothers in Christ, if you saw me lie like these people without any shame, how many people would be here? We have 263 people watching at the moment. How many people will come back? Thousands will inscribe exactly AKR. All of us, exactly Emmanuel. But you see, the more they lie, like this idiot here, I'm not going to, to mention this idiot here. He has no idea what Islam is. But this, this guy has th almost 300,000 subscribers, man. Almost 300,000 subscribers. And this guy is lying from the back of his teeth. And this is from the first minute. Guys, last time I, I'm telling you, I didn't actually really listen carefully to what was spoken in that one hour and 46 minute video, interview video with this idiot here, this Mimi Hijab. But I was, today, you know, I was, uh, we had an appointment with my wife. We had to go and do, uh, you know, check out the baby. You had an echo for the baby. And, you know, I was waiting and I, I was watching on my smartphone and I was, whoa, I miss this. I have to talk about this, right? So after I uploaded uh, that video about uh, Farida, 
I came back home. I was like, hey, I, I really have to spank this guy. All right? Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, it's sonography, yeah. So we came back and uh, I was like, uh, let me do, let me spank this idiot, this evil liar. So Mr. Yasser Qadi, is this ayah da'if? Because you just called your prophet and your Allah. Remember, everything Muhammad says is nothing but divine revelation. Chapter 53, ayah 3 and 4, right? So when Muhammad gave this ayah, was Muhammad a liar, Mr. Yasser Qadi? Because clearly, crystal clear ayah saying that Jews and Christians, atheists, unbelievers are not like, not equal with the Muslims. The highlighted one here. These are the Muslims. These are the unbelievers, right? The first sentence. These are the believers who are the Muslims. They cannot be alike. They are not equal. You evil son of Satan. What about this hadith, guys? What about this hadith? Jama Tirmidhi. Sahih, Jama Tirmidhi, Hadith number 1602. Let me give you the link, guys. Let's see the equality of the Prophet of Islam towards non-Muslims, towards the Jews and the Christians. Let, let us see what equality this idiot deceiver, Mr. Yasser Qari, is talking about. Narrated Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, so Muhammad is talking, no one else. And remember everything Muhammad says, everything that comes out of his mouth is divine revelation, right? Right Muslims? You agree, right? Do not precede the Jews and the Christians with salam. Where is the equality? Uh, Yasir Qadi, I think you forgot about uh, the ayah that we mentioned already and you forgot about that, this hadith. Sahih, brother. This is sunnah, brother. And if one of you, if, if a Muslim, if a Muslim meets any of the Jews and the Christians on the path, then force him, force the Jew or the Christian to its narrow portion. So force them as far as on the road, right? On the other side of the road. So, you know, it, back in the old days, 1400 years ago, you didn't really have uh, sewage and whatnot. So the sewage was actually on the side of the road. Garbage was on the side of the road. So you have to force them you have to force the Jews and the Christians to the crap, to the sewage. So what equality are you talking about, you liar? You liar? Do not perceive the Jews and the Christians. Some of the people of knowledge said that it only means that it disliked because it would be honoring them. Do you see it? So you cannot honor a Jew or a Christian. And on top of that, and the Muslims were ordered to humiliate them. What equality, what shish kebab, what falafel, what hummus on the side, Mr. Yasir Qadi. What equality are you talking about, you evil son of Satan? You see, actually, Islam is nothing but a racist cult. That's what we can conclude, right? From reading chapter 59, ayah 20, and that every Muslim must humiliate every Jew and Christian. Where is the equality? How do you dare Muslims to say that Muhammad removed racism? Huh? You see guys, you see how easy it is to spank even the hot shots. This guy is, claims to be a hot, he's a hot shot, right? He is the uh, Dr. Yasser Qadi. He's very respected, man. And he, I mean, if, if their best ones are nothing but deceivers and liars, what do you accept from, what do you ex accept from, from the not regular Muslims who have not much clue about Islam? They're only Muslims by name. I mean, if their shiyukh are liars and deceivers, they have no shame, they have no honor and no dignity. So what do you expect, accept from the Muslims who are followers of such people? Lying, blatant lie in a public video. Equality? Muhammad removed racism? He abolished racism? 
you evil son of Satan. I think, uh, I think Muhammad was a liar. Do you agree, Mr. Yasser Qadi? Your prophet was a liar, right? Because your prophet is the one who's talking. Your prophet was a liar, right? When he said you have to humiliate Jews and Christians, right? You cannot honor them. You have to dislike them, right? I think your prophet was a liar, right? Do you agree, uh, Yasser Qadi? Because this is Sahih Hadith, right? What about chapter 9, ayah 28? I think Yasser Qadi forgot about this one too. Now this is bad translation, man. Unclean? <laughs> Unclean, guys. Unclean. Is there any translation that does not do it? Ah, okay. This, this is this is somewhere. Look, chapter 9, ayah 28. Oh, you believe, Muslims. The Muslims. The associators, the ones who commit shirk, right? Are simply filthy. Nejis, filthy. Even lower than crap, man. Where's the equality? Mr. Yasser Qadi. Yeah, Muslims love black people. Yeah, this is why till today they call them Abid. Right? Abid, which, which means slave. They call black, black people slaves, man, till today. Especially the Arab. Guys, I am from the Middle East. The Arabs, right? The proud Arabs who claim to, you know, to be the real Muslims. They are the racist people that you can imagine in this planet. The most racist people that you can imagine on this planet. That's how they call black black people. And where do you think they got it from? From their prophet. Who owned black slaves, who sold black slaves, and traded black slaves. Because you are filthy, you are nejis, you are not allowed to approach Mecca. That's what Muhammad said. And if you fear that you're going to become poor, you're going to go bankrupt, because remember, According to the tafsir of this ayah, Muslims started to complain. We're going to get poor. Don't worry, Muhammad said. Don't worry, be happy. We have a solution. Allah will enrich you. Right? Allah will enrich you. How? You can force, right? You can force jizya on the people of the book. Remember? And they are going to feel disgraced and subdued. Humiliated, brother. Some Muslims guys are still, <laughs> they, th they still think they can get away with it to give us a false translation, right? They say, you know, they, would, uh, they pay the jizya and, uh, you know, willingly and humbled. <laughs> Let's see if we can find such a dece deceptive false translation. Let's see. I think yeah. so I international maybe. I don't Let's see. You see? False translation. You see it, guys? Humbled, humbled, humbled guys, do you see it? We're going to pay Jizya humble, humble. Look at this Taqiyya guys. So still Muslims, they have the audacity to, to give us false translation from Sahih International, which is the number one deceptive lying translation for, for the Quran in English. They have no shame man, but what do you expect from the more than 75% of the non-Arabic speaking Muslims. They have no idea what the Arabic says. It says, وَهُمْ صاغرون. Small. You know, literally it means small. In other words, dis disgraced, humiliated. So it's nothing but forcing of mafia protection money on the Jews and the Christians, right? And the only job for the Muslims is do jihad. Jihad fi sabil Muhammad. Fighting is your only job. You can force the jizya on the Jews and the Christians. You will get your money back. So you, you have on, your only job is to go and do jihad. Conquer countries. Right? Yeah, to belittle them, to disgrace them. Exactly, Christian warrior. Right? And, and look, look at the false translation, man. Look at the taqiyya and the translation. But what do you expect when you get the number one translation, basically, right? Sahih International, which is done by a woman. 
Yes, a woman translated this. And this is the most used translation in the world for the, uh, for the Quran. By a woman. A half-brained woman, according to Muhammad, right? Any Muslim? Is there any Muslim? Yeah, she's a convert, right? She's a convert to Islam. She's, so she's not really that good. She, basically, what she, maybe she's done, you know, copy from these other disgusting liars. You know, change it a little bit to look at like a newer translation. You know, you know why it, it got very popular, guys? Because it's called Sahih. <laughs> you know, when Muslims see the word Sahih, immediately they think this is perfect translation. Sahih, brother. So this is why it became so popular, to be honest with you. And you know, even Saudi Arabia, they, you know, they accepted it. Even Al-Azhar. But this is nothing but lies and deception, man. Taqiyya. Humbled? I will give you a thousand dollar if you can show me the word humbled here in the Arabic. Any Muslim who can show me the word humbled in the Arabic? Yeah, Islam without taqiyya is dying. Exactly, Ra'i. Exactly. Where's the word humbled here? Anyway. What about chapter 3, ayah 110, Mr. Yasir Qadi? You, Muslims, are the best. You are the best among all the nations. What did Yasir Qadi say? Equality. All people are equal. That's what Yasir Qadi said, right? I mean, you heard him. You know what? For the people who just joined. You know, maybe you don't know what we just said or played. Let us play the video again once more, guys, for the people who joined. To show you that this guy is nothing but a liar and deceiver, man. Very um, probing questions last time. Yeah, mashallah, I like about you that you are asking uh, relevant questions. Uh, mm -hmm. to an audience Very relevant. Yeah, holes in the narrative. Yeah. Because see, yeah. some of these topics should holes, be like, brother. This topic, okay, we can just understand the narrative. Uh, from what I understand, you have other questions as well. And I think that it's important that these platforms are given uh, yeah. to give these more detailed questions. So I appreciate your honesty uh, and your willingness to, to, to dialogue in this regard. Uh, with regards to the race issue, subhanAllah, look, I mean, look, it's look, a look. very Watch. interesting time to see what is going on in this country. Watch. And uh, I gave a khutbah recently, also had an interview with Imam Zayd Shak, uh, you know, and those are both online. And one thing that uh, really struck me, even when I was doing the Sira research, and it's yeah. even back then, 10 years ago, the what? Uh, the importance that importance? is not stressed on this issue of all peoples being equal. Did you catch it? All people, Islam stressed that all people are equal. You evil son of Satan. You evil son of Satan. We already spanked you. We already served you for everybody to see. You evil son of Satan, Ya Qadi. You evil son of Satan. Yeah, I can't play it harder, guys. This is the... Oh, I can. Sorry. Okay. Let me go back a little bit. Sorry, guys. I didn't put the volume high enough. Let me play the smart. I mean, it's a very interesting time to see what is going on in this country. And uh, I gave a khutbah recently, also had an interview. Sermon, he gave a Shabbat, sermon. Uh, you know, and those are both online. And mm -hmm. one thing that uh, really struck me, even when I was doing the Sira research, and it struck me even back what then. What did struck you? What? The, uh, the importance yeah. that Islam stressed on this issue of all peoples being equal. And <laughs> <laughs> you evil son of Satan. You liar, you scumbag. You know, uh, the Muslims must be proud about your taqiyya and deception. Your makr, right? The makr of Allah that you are using. The deception of Allah, the best of all deceivers, Satan himself, because you're a follower of Satan. Of course, you're going to use taqiyya. You're going to use the makr of Allah, which is nothing but deception, right? And I'll just give you, you know, two simple examples that, you know, we all know that Islam came to eliminate racism. We all know. <laughs> Islam came to eliminate racism. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? All people are equal according to Islam and Islam came to remove racism. To abolish racism. You filthy liar. <laughs> I mean, what, guys, what do you expect? 
What do you expect? What do you expect from Islam? It's nothing but taqiyah, deception and lies and Mecca, right? Deception, man. What this, if this is not deception, then I don't know the meaning of deception. Equality for all people? Islam came to remove, to abolish racism? When did that happen, man? Uh, Crusader General, thank you for the super chat. These Antifa and BLM cowards accuse the US of systematic racism. Where there is none, but not a single mention of the, I don't want to use that word, Islamic countries where slavery is the norm. Exactly, bro. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Islam is all about racism. Islam is all about not being equal with non-believers. You are the best of the best. That's what Muhammad told the Muslims. Right? You're the best nation. And humiliate and disgrace the Jews and the Christians. Watch. Watch. Let me show you, you know, when we, when we say something, we are not like these liars and deceivers, man. These people have no shame. Let me show you how Muslims must disgrace Jews and Christians. Watch. Watch how easy it is to spank these liars and deceivers. Let me give you the link, guys. Let me give you the link. Watch, guys. Filthy. Yeah, we are filthy. <clears throat> the the mushrikun are filthy. There's nothing called impure. The word is najis. If we scroll down, if we scroll down, uh, you see the Muslims started to complain. Our markets will be closed. Remember, this is a tafsir for chapter nine, ayah twenty nine, ayah twenty eight. The Muslims started to complain. We are going to go bankrupt. Our markets will be closed. And Muhammad said, don't worry, be happy. We have a solution for you. What's that? The jizya, brother. Mafia protection money on the Jews and the Christians. Especially the Christians. And they must feel subdued. You see, where's the word humbled? You see how Sahih International is nothing but taqiyya? This ayah means, this will be your compensation. What is that? The jizya from the Jews and the Christians. For your closed markets. Do you see it? That's the context. Muslims always cry for context. Rob Christian, you're a liar. You're a deceiver. Show me the context. Here, here you go. This is the context of chapter 9, ayah 28, 29. 28, 29. Chapter 9, Surah Tasayf. Surah Tawbah. Right? Surah Tasayf, the sword. That's the nickname for this chapter. Take a while, guess why it's called the sword, brother. And why? Why they must feel subdued? Why? What? How, what? What? What does that mean? Let's see where uh, I'm looking for those couple of words. Wait a second, guys. Just bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Ah. Uh -huh. Ah, disgraced, humiliated, so the Jews and the Christians must feel disgraced, humiliated, and belittled. Guys, this is Ibn Kathir. This is the Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir says this. Rob Christian, RC, it doesn't say that RC, you liar. Where is Uncle Jamal from Speaker's Corner when you need him? Yeah, don't care. Yahmar! Liar! Yeah. Liar! You see how, uh, how Yasser Qadi has no shame, guys? Do you see why I said, and I quote, You, Yasser Qadi, you have no shame, you have no honor, you have no dignity. Why are you lying? Why, I, why are you calling your prophet and Allah liars and deceivers? Why are you calling your Allah and prophet scumbags? It doesn't say that, R.C. Yeah. See, who are the people of the Dhamma? Those are the Jews and the Christians, right? So for they are miserable, disgraced, and humiliated. Belittled, humiliated, and disgraced. Where is the equality? Where is the shish kebab? Where is the falafel on the side? Huh? See? Do not even say, Salaamu Alaikum to the Jews and the Christians. If you see them. 
but actually, if you meet any of them on the road, force them to its narrowest alley. Do you see it? Force them to the crab. Because remember, as we showed you, right? as we explained to you, back in the old days, you didn't have a sewage like today, right? Back in the old days, the sewage was on the side of the road. So the Jews and the Christians had to walk in the sewage. So that the Muslims will have clean feet. You know, the Muslims will walk in the middle and the Jews and the Christians, because they are not equal to the, Jew, uh, to the Muslims, they have to, force, to, to be forced to walk in the dirt, in the crap. So you see, guys, that these people have no, uh, no shame. Do you see how these people have no shame? Yes, Sir Qadi, I challenge you, I challenge you for a debate. I hope that my video is going to reach you. I challenge you for a debate and I challenge you to, re to repeat the words that you said. You said, and I quote, Islam said that all people are equal. That's what you said, number one. Number two, you said that Islam abolished racism. I challenge you in a debate with me to say it out loud again, repeat it so I can spank you like I, I'm spanking you right here, right now. I challenge you to do that. Do you have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim who thinks he has the knowledge and the courage to debate me live on air? We know these people uh, are too scared to debate a Christian who speaks Arabic. This guy can only debate, uh, debate uh, Mr. James White, you know, James White. Brother, why are you not debating a guy like me or Christian Prince who actually know real Islam, right? Debate me, man. Where, uh, where are the heroes, Muslims? Where are your heroes when you need them? We have 271 people watching. Where are the Muslim heroes? Peter Sayer says best is to debate face to face. Why? Peter, Peter, listen Peter. Why is debating face to face the best? Please tell me why. Are you saying that you need to prepare a 10 paper that you prepared one month ahead and then you're going to read it for a crowd? for a hundred people or two hundred people watching. Everybody can do that, man. Let us do you question, one question for you, one question for me. I ask you a question, you ask me a question. Let's do that. Everybody, even my, my eight-year-old nephew can do read. Everybody can read a 10 paper that you prepared one month ahead. That's not debating, man. Everybody can read a paper. I can prepare a paper one month before. I can write it all down. And by the time that, that you know, uh, the 30 minutes are done, re I, I'm, I'm done reading the 10 papers. The other, the other guy, right? Let's say Yasser Qadi is the opponent, uh, you know, opponent. He will, by the time I, 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 I finished my 10 paper, he already forgot what I said. How are you going to corner someone when he's going to read a 10 paper, 30 minutes reading. No, the best way to debate is you ask me a question, either you spank me or I spank you. I ask you a question, you ask me a question. That's the way to, to a good debate. Because you will not forget what I said and I will not forget what you said. Uh, after 30 minutes, guys, uh, how, can, how, can, how can I... Uh, do you want me to, you know, in, in, in 30 minutes, you want me to go through all, everything you said? How can someone uh, remember what someone said for 30 minutes talk? How can you corner some, someone like that? You can't. So actually debating face to face is nothing but a joke. Honest to God. And you all should agree with that. It's a joke. Everybody can prepare a 10 paper, uh, 10 paper reading, man. Even my nephew can do it. That's not debating. And you actually are going to put people asleep talk for 30 minutes long you know okay 
where is where's the refutation, man? This is what happened, guys. Remember with the debate with this kid, with David Wood? By the time David Wood finished his, his reading, the guy did, did not even pay attention. He was not even focused. Remember when David Wood said, Allah prays for, not to? And this guy, after David Wood was finished, he came and he said the same. I knew I'm going to teach you Arabic lessons. I knew. And he repeated exactly what David Wood said. This is why, this guy said, this is why the translators put in their translation, Allah prays for, not to. I mean, you idiot, David al already said that. You see? No, face to face is a joke. Face to face, it's not enough anymore. Either you get spanked or you spank. That's real debating. Yeah, face to face is like reading a poem. You know, this is why idiots like Farida will never ever debate someone like us. Because they know. Because he knows he's going to get cornered and spanked like his uh, shiuch, Like Yasser Qadi. If Yasser Qadi would have said that in a debate with me, right? That all people, according to Islam, all people are equal. Immediately, immediately I would have spanked him. Immediately. I'm not going to allow him to read a 30 minute paper. Are you going to put me asleep or are you going to corner me, spank me, or I am going to corner you and spank you? Yeah, copying 30 pages from Sheikh Google and you call that a debate. Exactly iPhone 3G. What, what, what debate, man? Everybody can do that, man. You know, debating for Muslim is nothing but a, a show. You like, like this idiot here. He was raising his voice. David Wood was humble and he was respectful. This guy was mocking him. That's, that's, that's what says debating for Muslims. Making a show, right? He was even reading Quran. He was reciting the Quran during the, uh, during the debate, man. He was reciting Quran. What debate, man? It was nothing but a show and mocking. So no, the old fashioned face to face is a joke. It, it became a joke because those kind of debates will not work with a Muslim. Muslims are a different kind of breed. Either you spank them or you will allow them to get away with what they said. Tours 732. Tours 732. Uh, Muhammad's name means the praised one. So you, both. You're wrong in both those things that you said. It's the praised one. So uh, Muhammad made himself equal with Allah. Muhammad, when he called himself Muhammad, because remember, Muhammad was not his real name. It's a title. It's a divine title. Right? He was trying to copy Jesus basically, right? Because Jesus is called the anointed one. Christ, the anointed one. Right? The truth. So Muhammad wanted to, to have a divine title too. And he made himself equal with Allah, remember? Why, you're a Christian? Here is why. Chapter 1. When Muhammad called himself Muhammad, he made himself equal to Allah. And here's the, here's the reason why. All praise is to Allah. Alhamdulillah. Al the praise is for Allah. So how did Muhammad take that name? Well, it's only for Allah in Islam. You see? So here Muhammad became Allah. Yeah, exactly. Muhammad, a.k.a. Allah. Exactly. Yeah, his real name is Qathim. Not Muhammad. So when Qathim became Muhammad, he became Allah. Equal with Allah. Did you catch it? Yes. And where is the equality, guys? Let us, uh, Mr. Yasser Qadi, where, what equality, what shish kebab are you talking about? Abu Huraira narrated, Sunan al Nisai, Hadith, Sahih. You see it? Sahih. Hadith number 3974. Let me give you the link, guys. Let us continue. The spanking. The Messenger of Allah, S-A-W. Allah is praying on him. Allah prays for, not to. Yeah. Said, so Muhammad said, I have been commanded to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illallah. And whoever says it, his life and his wealth are safe from me. Wow! What equality, Mr. Uh, Shaky Sheikh Yasir Qadi? 
What equality are you talking about? I want to know what equality you are talking about, Yasser Qari. <laughs> so if you are not a Muslim, you are not equal to a Muslim, and the Muslims will fight you, and they will take your money, and they will take your women, your daughters and wives as sex slaves, and your blood is not going to be safe. So they have the right to force you to become a Muslim. Right? I have been commanded to fight the people until Aslim Fataslim. Convert or else. Let me type it in the live chat. Aslim Fataslim. Convert or else. Else what? Yeah, you know what. We chop off your head, brother. We take your women as sex slaves, brother. Your 12-year-old daughter will take her as a sex slave, brother. We will take your money, brother. Remember what Muhammad did to Kinana, guys? He burned his chest. He burned his chest. Muhammad himself burned the chest of Kinana. With a hot iron rod on his chest, yes. And he killed him for money. You know, to tell him where the money is. Muhammad is nothing but mafia, man. And on top of that, after killing the poor guy, he took his wife and he raped her on the same night he killed Quinana. Yeah, that was a guy, right? One of the enemies of Muhammad. Muhammad forced him to tell him where the money is, where the wealth is. And he killed him, he burned his chest. He tortured him and he killed him and he raped his wife, Safiya. That's the story of Safiya, brother. You remember Safiya? He was raping her all night. And when he, the next morning, when he was finished raping her, he came outside of his tent. Yes, Muhammad himself. He came outside of the tent and he saw a companion standing, guarding the tent all night. He asked him, what are you doing here? You know what the Sahabi said? You know what the companion said to his prophet? To Muhammad? The rapist? He said, yeah, I was afraid that Safiya would put a knife in you in your chest while you are asleep because you were raping her you killed her husband and you were raping her why no one is calling because they are all scared man what do you think story of my life poor Safiya yeah it's not enough to kill her uh, to, to kill her whole family right to kill her young husband because remember she just got married Kinana, he tortured her husband, he killed her uncles, he, she, uh, Muhammad killed her brother, brothers, he killed her father, and on the same night he raped her. True love story, man. True love story. Let me give you this link again, guys. What equality, man? What equality are you talking about, uh, Yasser Qadi? You liar? What about this one? Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah said, So Muhammad again the one talking, The last hour will not come until the Muslims fight against the Jews, until a Jew will hide himself behind a stone. So the Jews are going to hide themselves behind a stone, or a tree, and the stone, or the tree will say, so you see in Islam, stones and trees talk. Don't ask me why, guys. I'm not a Muslim. But in Islam, you have stones who can speak and you have trees who can speak. Yeah, only in Islam, brother. Muslims are inside the matrix, right? They are inside the matrix. Dream world, brother. Neo, are you there, brother Neo? Anyway, so the stones and the trees will talk and say, Oh Muslim, there's a Jew behind me. Come and kill him. But al gharqa tree, so this is a Jewish tree, will not say so. So the, the, the tree will protect, this kind of tree will protect the Jews. For it is the tree of the Jews. You see, these evil trees, man, these evil Jewish trees, man, they will not tell, rat out the, the Jews. The Gharqa trees, they will not rat out the Jews, brother. They will not talk, brother, because these are Jewish trees. What do you expect from the Jewish trees, man? The Jews, brother. 
You know, right? you know, right? the Jews, even the Jews, trees, man. Filthy trees, man. Cut off those trees, man. And remember what Muhammad did, guys? Muslims will always love to tell you. Muhammad never cut down trees. But Muhammad did cut down trees. What about the Banu Nadir when he cut the, off their trees? You know, their fruit trees. He burned them. You see? Muslims, when they speak, they call their prophet a liar and a deceiver. That's what this guy is doing. Same. Man, Jews trees, man. These are evil trees, man. They will not rot out the Jews, brother. Maybe you will, uh, you know, force the, those trees to do a truth uh, test, man. What, what do you call that uh, device, guys, that the uh, FBI and the CIA use? You know, to make someone speak uh, the truth. Maybe we should use that against those Jewish trees, man. To investigate. Truth serum. Maybe you can force yeah, a lie de detector or a truth serum, right? Yeah, a lie detector, yeah. Maybe it will work on this tree to tell them, to tell us where all the Jews are hiding, man. And this is Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Don't say this is Da'if, brother. See? Let me give you the link to this one too. Save those links, guys. If you, for your debates, when you debate Muslims. When they say, Islam came to make everything equal. Yeah, right. Everybody is equal, brother. No racism, brother. It's all abolished by Muhammad, brother. Yeah, right, you evil son of Satan. <laughs> the taqiyya detector, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one, Snail Leopard. Oh, man. Guys, let us go to a uh, another video. You know. I don't, I don't like to spank the same sheikh over and over. You know, it's funny when Muslims say, you know, you, you rob Christian, you Christian prince, you will not stand against an imam. Yeah, we see how easy it is to spank your imams, man. <laughs> yes, yeah, Qadi, bro, I will, if I debate this guy, I will force him to do the monkey dance with, within five minutes. Within five minutes, I will force him to do the monkey dance. <laughs> Evil son of Satan, man. Lying, man. Let us play the second video. All right. Let's see. Oh, actually, I have another part that I want to play. Okay. I, I could not even remember that. But anyway, let us continue. And then we'll see if we can find another video. New. This is from the time of the Sahaba. In the Sahih or the Hassan Hadith of Ubay bin Ka'b. Hadith yeah. of the so he's going to mention a hadith about Ubay. Remember, Ubay is one of those four people that Muhammad in Sahih al Bukhari, remember? Sahih Bukhari hadith. Muhammad commanded people regarding the recitation of the Quran go to Ibn Mas'ud, go to Ubay ibn Kaab, and to others, right? So he's going to talk about Ubay. Watch. From the time of the Sahaba in okay. the Sahih or the Hassan hadith of Ubay ibn Kaab. Ubay ibn Kaab. Okay. That when the Prophet mentioned the issue of Ahruf and that there are different. So, guys, uh, according to Islam, you know, you are, you are hearing him talking about Ahruf. Till today, Muslims cannot agree what Ahrufs are. So, don't ask Rob Christian, because I'm not a Muslim. Don't ask us what Ahruf are. Right? In Islam, Muhammad said there are seven Ahrufs. Right? Till today, they do not agree what Ahruf are. Right? Some say it's seven uh, recitations for the Quran, seven ways. Other will say it's something different. No scholar can agree with another scholar what, it, what the meaning is because Muhammad failed to tell his Sahaba what the seven Ahrufs are. Some dare to say it means seven dialects. No, you evil son of Satan. It does not mean dialects. We already refuted that many times. So till today, they cannot even say what the seven Ahruf are. This is why this guy is struggling. Right? Holes in the standard narrative, brother. Yeah. 
It's a maybe, exactly, David Ray. The, the answer is maybe, brother, maybe. So the best sheikh cannot answer what the seven ahruf are. So never accept when you talk to a Muslim and you're talking about the 70, 37 different Arabic Qurans and they say, no, you know, uh, seven ahruf, but tell them, what it, can you tell me what it means? And you will see him, you see the poor guy is going to tap dance because he has no answer. No Muslim knows what the seven ahruf are. They don't know. It's a religion of maybe. Right? It's the religion of maybe. Hakim, Hakim, listen, Hakim. Ya yeah, Hakim. Call me live on air. Yalla. I challenge you to debate me live on air. Do you have the guts to debate me? My Skype is open, brother. My Skype is the Rob Christian. Call me. Uh, Anti Unitarian Christian, I just told you Muslims don't know what it means. And you are asking me, a Christian, what it means? Ahruf, we mean letters, right? Letters, let's say letters of the alphabet. But what it what it actually means? They don't know. They have no idea what it means. Yeah, it's the deen of Al Maybe. Yeah, the religion of Maybe. It means literally, it means seven letters. But what it means? They don't know. What seven? What what is what does seven letter mean? Explain. No Muslim can do that. Allahu alam, exactly. Allah knows best. That's the, that's the answer, brother. Yeah. Harf, singular. Ahruf, plural. Seven letters. But what it, what does it mean? They don't know. Uh, Hakim Ibrahim is, so you came to tell everybody that I am copying Christian Prince, that's it? My friend. You think that's an insult, but it's an honor to be compared to Christian Prince. It's an honor, you idiot. You think it's an insult to call me uh, CP Junior or uh, your uh, you're Christian? You're copying Christian Prince, you idiot. First of all, you have no idea who I am. Second, like I said, it's an honor to be compared to Christian Prince. Third, you evil son of Satan, idiot, you donkey, and I'm not trying to insult any real donkey. I come from the same place that Christian Prince was in, where Paul Talk. We all started there. Zechariah Butros started there. Go to any Arabic speaking room on Paul Talk till today. They all they have all the same style. They are all aggressive. Christian Prince didn't start it. If you want to go there. Zachariah Butro started this with others like him many, many years ago. So Christian Prince is not the only aggressive Arabic speaking Christian man. But you know that. I mean, you know us, right? <laughs> and again, it's not an insult to be compared to Christian Prince, Mr. Christian Prince, the le living legend himself. So it's an honor. You know, Muslims, they think when they call me Christian Prince, uh, you want to be Christian Prince, they think they are insulting me. But you are actually honoring me when you say that. It's an honor, you idiot. <laughs> what an idiot, man. What an idiot, man. Guys, I kid you not, if you care to install Potok and you, little, you know little bit Arabic, go to the biggest Arabic rooms and see how you have there Rob Christian number one, Rob Christian number two, three. You have Christian Prince one, two, three, four, five, ten. These admins that are there, they are even more aggressive than Christian Prince and me. You know, you have no idea how aggressive Arabic speaking Christians are on Paul Talk. They don't allow any Muslim to go away with one word. If they open their mouth, they start to force them to, to answer. You don't answer the question, just go. No humble, no respect, nothing. You come here, you want to face us, you have the audacity to be in our room as a Muslim. We ask you a question, you don't answer, we were forcing you to do the monkey dance. So no. But you know guys, because Christian Prince is famous in the English world, right? Because unfortunately not many Arabic speaking Christians are doing what we do in this language, in the English, 
because most of them, you know, they are diehard Arabic speakers. This is why Christian Prince is famous, right? And I actually, you know, we are, as you know, guys, we are doing this for 15 years, right? I'm doing this for 15 years. But I started recently, guys. I'm on YouTube for one year and a couple of months, right? And guys, <laughs> because of you, because your, because of your, you lovely audience, my YouTube channel exploded. Let me, let me tell you a, a small secret, guys. Sm secret between me and you only. Muslims are not listening. <laughs> Muslim, Muslims, sh shut your ears. Don't listen. Don't listen to this. In one month, I got myself 2,000 subscribers. Ask yourself why. Just in one month, 2,000 subscribers. Show me any channel who, who can do what we do. Just in one month. I kid you not. I'm not going to say, guys, you know, because our YouTube channels are under attack all the time. I'm not going to tell you how many subscribers I have. But you have no idea, guys. Actually, my YouTube channel, because of you guys, because of your trust in us, my YouTube channel exploded. I mean, look at, at, at the viewers, right? Look at the viewers. Because of you guys. 328 to 27 people watching. You think that's easy? You think it's easy to run such a YouTube channel? No. Because, guys, I want to thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for Him to give me this set of skills, right? And you guys don't need me. Honest to God, you don't need me. Why? Because I myself, I'm a sinner. I'm here only to serve. I need Jesus. You don't need me, guys. But if, if it's the plan of the Holy Spirit to guide me and teach you, then so be it. It's an honor to be with you guys. I'm only here to serve. Right? I mean, look at my YouTube. Uh, when I, when I start to go to do a, a video, how many, how many times did you see more dislikes than likes before we even start? I even, uh, uh, destroyed the, the record of Christian Prince in many dislikes. Right? Because we are doing a lot of damage, man. Muslims can't handle this. Many times. Yes, f 3G, you are confirming it. But guys, again, God is my witness. God is my witness. We are not doing this for fame. We are not doing this for ourselves. We are doing this for the truth. And look how many Muslims are leaving Islam because of what we do. We are not doing this uh, because we hate Muslims. We are not doing this to, to, for money and fame. We are doing this to help those poor victims that we call Mohammedans. Only the last week, four Muslims left Islam. Four Muslims. Yesterday, brother Rory, I prayed to him in, with him in private, on Discord, in private. And this brother became a Christian. He was a Muslim. Of course they want to shut us down. Right? Of course, they're going to try everything they have to, you know, to insult us, to try to shut us down. Because they are bankrupt. They come here to play games. Rob Christian, you are like a Christian prince wannabe. Is that all? My friend, it's an honor. It's an honor to be compared with Christian prince. Idiot. <laughs> you think it's an insult? Keep calling me that. It's an honor. Uh, anyway, let me go back a little bit because the Muslim came to play. Let us continue, guys. The about obey, that, right? About when obey, about the ahruf. Let me go back a little bit. From the time okay. of the Sahaba. Mm -hmm. In the Sahih or the Hassan Hadith of Ubay bin Ka'ab. The Hadith of the ahruf. Hadith of about the ahruf. The Prophet mentioned the issue of ahruf. And yes. that there are different ahruf and whatnot. This there is are different the ahruf. Okay. Ubayy bin Ka'ab says, authentic hadith. Ubayy says. What is he saying, guys? Let me translate. Ubayy, one of the four, remember. According to Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhammad said, go to Ibn Mas'ud, go to Ubayy and two others. But Ibn Mas'ud and Ubayy were the most important ones. And this is the Ubayy ibn Ka'ab, right? Ubayy ibn Ka'ab. He started to doubt. Did you hear it? Let me go a little bit back. Let me translate again. Ahmed, Ubayy ibn Ka'ab says, authentic hadith. Ubayy ibn Ka'ab says, 
I started to feel doubt in my in myself in, inside me. Did you catch it? That's what Ubay ibn Kaab said. Ubay said, this is one of the four, guys. Imagine, he's, he ate with Muhammad, he drank with Muhammad, and he and this important Sahabi started to doubt. I feel doubt inside me, said Ubay. So what about the Muslims of today? If even, if even the most important Sahabi who is reciting the Quran, who Muhammad for, uh, forced and commanded the Muslims to go to, Ubay ibn Kaab, for the Quranic recitation, he started to doubt because he's, he was not stupid. He knew that Muhammad was lying. How can the Quran be one, but you come with seven ahruf? Remember, seven letters, seven ways. Muslims will say, it means seven dialects, it means seven ways, uh, it means this and that. They can't even agree on what the actual meaning is of seven ahruf. Seven letters, right? Remember, literal meaning, seven letters. But what it, does it mean? They don't know. Because Muhammad failed to tell them what it means. Because every time a companion comes, he recited a different way. You remember when Omar grabbed someone by, by his neck and he was about to kill him? When he was reciting the Quran differently than he did? And he dragged him with it, you know, he forced him and he dragged him over the floor to Muhammad. He said, look Muhammad, he's reciting the Quran, I'm, I'm about to kill him. He's reciting the Quran differently than I do. And Muhammad asked him to recite the poor guy, and he recited, and Muhammad says, yes, yes, this is the, also the correct way, right? Any Muslim? Seven ways, seven ahruf, seven, <laughs> seven all kind of stuff. They can't agree what it means. And this guy is struggling, right? So let us continue. Let us continue what Ubay uh, did and said. In my heart, a doubt came. A doubt came. So Ubay is saying, in my heart, a doubt came. And this is one of the four. Actually, this is the guy who is in the chain of narration for the Quran. Yes. The Quran of Hafs, according to Muslims, he is in the chain. Immediately after Muhammad. So the Quran is from Allah, guys. So basically, in a nutshell, the Quran from Allah, through Jibreel, through Muhammad, and then you have Ubay, and all the way, right? Ubay, and then many people, and the last one is Hafs, right? Did you catch it, guys? So this guy immediately after Muhammad is already having a doubt. This is the, this is the number one guy, people. Hafs got, supposedly got, you know, the whole chain of narration for the Quran. The guy himself who took it from Muhammad is having a doubt. Try not to laugh, guys. Try not to laugh. I mean, this is the guy to go to. And he's doubting in his heart. Wow. And look what happens next. Watch. Look what happens next. Look at the solution from Muhammad for this doubt. That I Look. hadn't had about Islam since the days of Jahiliya. Wow. This is not... Wait, wait, this is really important stuff, guys. Let, do, not, do not allow it to slip from your fingers. You have to listen carefully what Yasir Qadi is saying. Yes, doubt in my heart. In my heart, a doubt came. Obey saying, yes. About Islam since the days of Jahiliya. He didn't have the same doubt, guys. Obey is saying... He did not have the same doubt before he became a Muslim. So in the time of Al-Jahiliyyah, they call it the time of Al-Jahiliyyah, the time of the ignorance. Right? That's what Ubay is saying. He's confirming that he, he did not have such a doubt even, you know, the time before Al-Jahiliyyah. Wow! The time of becoming a Muslim, before that. A doubt came. That I Doubt hadn't came. had about Islam since the days of Jahiliyyah. Did you catch it? He didn't have it since the days of Jahiliyyah. Wow! This, these are huge uh, claims, guys. A huge claim for Rubey. This is the guy to go to. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. This is not a joke! <laughs> it's not a joke! 
Co- mass confusion. The Prophet said, if you want to listen to the Quran directly, listen to Ubay. Ubay Go to the some, Ubay. Did you hear it, guys? Sahabi. Did you hear it? Go to Ubay. He's not a normal guy. He's the guy to go to. And if the guy is doubting, what about the poor Muslims? After 1400 years, the Muslims that are living here among us, between us. Poor Muslims, man. If the number one guy is already having a doubt. Wow. Joke, brothers and sisters. This is not a joke. The issue of Ahruf and Qiraat yes. caused confusion. Confusion. Somebody whom the Prophet said, if you want to listen to the Quran directly, go to him. Listen to Ubay. Ubay is not some even average Sahabi. Wow. He is the Qari of the Quran. He the Qari. The... He's the number one guy. With Ubay ibn, Ka, uh, sorry, ibn, ibn Mas'ud. Remember Ibn Mas'ud? Yeah. Another guy. Master. He is the master. He is. And he, he is who he is. is. Like, what is all of this stuff? And what is this? I'm doubting. What is this, man? Seven ahruf? Muhammad, you thought that the Quran is one. How is it seven ahruf? <laughs> the the prophet, put, it, yeah. put his hand and then he goes, it all went away. Yeah. Uh, look at the taqiyya now. Look at the taqiyya now. I caught you again, you taqiyya boy. I just grabbed you again. Not literally, guys. We are behind the computer. I just caught you with your with your lies. Red-handed. Why, you're a Christian? Yes. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hi. I was just calling because I live down the street. Just a second. Just a second. Why and are you calling? to my house today. Just, just, and a, she just a second. Dog. Just a second, why are you calling me with the name Farid Response? Who are you? This is Satpal. Who? Satpal? Sagbal, yeah. So why are you pretending? Why are you rep- uh, why are you pretending to be Farid? Farida. Come to my house today and she come on my property and then she kicked my dog. Yeah, yeah, okay. I know that joke, man. It's a very old joke, man. She kicked my dog, brother. Yeah, we know this joke. Yeah, trolls. He's pretending, guys. He's pretending to be uh, Farid. Farid response. Now he changed his name to look. Rob Eater. <laughs> let me let me block this uh, troll. He just called me by the name of uh, Farid response. I kid you not. And then immediately he's changing his name. <laughs> Kids, man, look, the cowards, Farida, you know, they are sending us these kids to troll us, to shut us down, to silence us, to distract us, because they know we are doing damage, right? They, don't, they are triggered, brother. Brother, they are triggered, brother, because we are spanging their shiuch, brother. Now, guys, forget about it, you know, I came to play, it's okay, brother. When you are triggered, you have nothing, you are bankrupt, you have nothing, of course, you're going to send us kids. Did you see what he said? Let me go back now. Why did I say I just caught him lying? Watch why. Let me go back a little. The Qari of the Quran. He is the master. He okay, is so obey is the master. And he goes, He started to doubt, okay? And the Prophet, the prophet put, it, yeah. put his hand and then he goes, it all went away. Yeah. Uh, so you see what he, what he just said? The Prophet, why, why did I call him with a lie? Here's why. He's saying that the Prophet came and he put his hand on his chest, right? That's what he said. Watch. And he goes, Yeah, okay. What, is all of this stuff? what did the, the Prophet, prophet do? The prophet, put, it, yeah. put his hand and then he goes, it all went away. Yeah. Wow, it seems that the Prophet is a blessing, brother. So the Prophet put on him his hand on Obey's body and the doubt was gone. And what is he saying about this? Yeah, me and you, we don't have that blessing. Do we don't we? have the blessing. You, you don't have that blessing. This is now, why we are in doubt. Um, again, Did you catch the, it? Yeah, me and you, yeah. we don't have that blessing. Like, what is all of this stuff? And the process, the prophet, put, it, yeah. put his hand and then he goes, it all went away. It yeah, all went away. You, we don't have that blessing. We don't Do have we? that blessing that obey God because brother Muhammad put his hand on obey brother. You evil son of Satan. Why Rob Christian? Why is he lying again, Rob Christian? Guys, do you have any idea why he's lying? Do you have any idea why, why I just caught him with a lie? Any, any, anyone? Why is he lying, guys? What, why is the reason I stopped the video? 
Where, how did Rob Christian caught him with a lie? Anyone, any idea? No spoilers? If you know the, uh, the answer, just say, I know. <laughs> Ramos, correct, you're correct, no problem. You gave us a spoiler, but you're correct. Ramos, you're correct. He didn't, he didn't put his hand on him. No, no, he beat the hell out of him. You remember when we made that video about how Muhammad was boxing, was, was having a boxing match with Aisha, how he struck her in the chest and it caused her pain? Remember that one? Remember that live show? Yeah, Muhammad, my friend, he was, he was using people as a punching bag. I kid you not. Here's the hadith that he's talking about. Let me give you the link, guys. This is Sahih Muslim. You heard, you heard what he said. He put his hand on him. No, it's much more than that. It's much more worse than that. Why, Rob Christian? Because it says, Daraba fi sadri. He punched me, he beat me in my chest. So Muhammad, according to Ubay, beat him in his chest. What laying down his hand down, you evil son of Satan? Why are you lying? Why are you calling your prophet a liar? Why are you calling Ubay a liar, Mr. Yasir Qadi? And this guy was saying, yes, yes, that's true, that's true. You heard him, right? We heard the video. Let's see. So this is talking about, you know, this is what, what they were talking about, the seven ahruf. And this is talking about Ubay, right? Here, look, Ubay. It's Ubay himself. And then if we, let's see. Uh, and there occurred in my mind a sort of denial. Look how they are translating as denial. No, it's a doubt, which did not occur even during the days of ignorance. Did you catch it? So here, Obey was having a doubt, right? About the different styles of recitation, the different seven ahruf. And Muhammad, what did Muhammad do? Struck me in my chest. Do you see it? He beat him in his chest. What's laying his hand on him? Why hit him? To, to remove the, the doubt from him. Brother, let me hit you in your chest so you, the doubt will go away. Muhammad was using not only Aisha, but his, he was using his own Sahaba as a punching bag, man. Beat the doubt out of him. Exactly, Ergusam. That's what I want to go to. Brother, let me beat the hell out of you. That, In other words, in Islam, that means I just laid my hand on you. Brother, brother, why are you using taqiyya, Mr. Yasser Qadi, brother? Why are you such a scumbag liar, brother? Why are you not quoting what the hadith actually says? The word is daraba, right? Let us go to Google Translate. To see if Rob Christian is lying, guys. Right? We already showed you from the English translation, but let's see what Google says. For just to confirm from two different sources, right? Lord in my chest. <laughs> yeah, Google Translate is even more worse. No, you know, you know, you have the idea, right? Oh, wait, I copy it wrong. Sorry, guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. You see, I didn't copy it correctly. Sorry, guys. My mistake. Let us go back. I didn't copy it the correct way. Yes, Rob means uh, Lord. Hit in my chest. Do you see? Sorry, guys. Do you see? So he struck him in his chest. He beat the hell out of him. What laying hand on him? You liar, you evil son of Satan. Why are you lying? Why are you lying, guys? Why are you not quoting the text as it is? They want to sugarcoat it. Evil son of Satan. Right? You evil son of Satan. What did he say? Even average Sahabi. He is the Qari of the Quran. He mm -hmm. is the master. He is the who he is. the master. And yeah, he the was Qari. Fi nafsi shak. Doubt. And the Prophet, and the prophet put, it, yeah. put his hand. And then he 
Brother, he put his hand, brother. <laughs> it's a blessing to be beaten by Muhammad, brother. Was, uh, it all went away. Yeah, it all went away. We don't the have dog went blessing. away. We oh, don't have this blessing. What is the blessing of be getting beaten by Muhammad? That's the blessing, brother. Ble the blessing is... The blessing is getting a beating from Muhammad. Brother, if that's a blessing, then please don't hit me, brother. If that's the way to bless someone, please don't hit me. Don't hit me, brother. I'm not Britney. Hit me, baby, one more time. I'm not Britney Spears, brother. Don't hit me, brother. I don't want that kind of blessing from you, Muhammad, brother. Don't bless us. Exactly. Tiger J. <laughs> you see how these people have no shame, guys? Do you see how these people have no shame? Lying. Why are you lying? <laughs> Why are you lying, you evil son of Satan? Oh, man. <laughs> these people have no shame, man. Truly, these, these people have no shame. So he struck him on his chest. And Ubay continues saying, whereupon I broke into sweating and felt as though I were looking at Allah with fear. I mean, if, uh, if, if, if a guy comes to beat the hell out of me, of course I'm going to start sweating and, and, and I feel a lot of pain. And of course I'm going to be in fear. I mean, the guy didn't know what hit him, man. Imagine, you, have, you are having a doubt. And on top of that, the guy comes to beat the hell out of you. And of course you start to fear, you know. So he beat the sense out of him. <laughs> so Muhammad was forcing people to believe. Brother, I don't doubt. Or I'm going to beat the hell out of you, brother. I'm going to bless you. Let me beat you and bless you at the same time. <laughs> what is this religion, man? What is this religion, man? Please, Muslims, explain this religion to us. Muhammad beating the hell out of his Sahaba, in this case, Ubay, and then, the, you know, because of the beating, the doubt is gone. The guy, you know, the guy starts to, to, be, to, to be scared, man. He did not, not know what hit him. Yes, Imams do hit their students, guys. Look, go to the Arab world, go to Af uh, Afghanistan, go to Pakistan. They beat the hell out of their students. And that's what Muhammad was doing. <laughs> beat some nonsense into him. <laughs> C4, you're funny, bro. Uh, what kind of religion is this, guys? You know, after 15 years study, studying this disgusting cult, guys, this garbage, I still today, I, I'm still amazed how someone can be a Muslim in 2020. After reading these disgusting, these, this damage, man. Imagine if this was Jesus and I started to beat the hell out of people. Brother, please hit, hit me to bless me, brother. Pow, pow. Let me beat some blessings inside you, brother. Oh, man. Let us go to the third video, guys. To the third video. All right. Third video. <laughs> Adnan Rashid. Adnan Rashid. Yeah, that guy. Oh, man. So Adnan Rashid was watching the video. The damage video. The damage video from Yasir Qadi and Muhammad Hijab. And he had to say something about it, brother. He needed to do damage control after the damage all was already done. After we started to copy the videos and share them, you know, and make fun out of Islam, mock Muhammad, mock Islam, and, <laughs> and show you that Muslims after 1400 years still cannot agree. You know, there are holes in the st Islamic standard narrative. Holes, cheese, like holes in the cheese, brother. So this Pakistani boy, he's not even an Arab. He doesn't know Arabic. Right? He's going to help out and do, do some damage control, right? Damage control, brother. He has damage control. You know, explain the damage away. After the damage is done, after the boat is already sinking. 
brother, let me do some damage control, brother. Right? Damage control. Let me beat, uh, maybe he's going to beat uh, uh, Muhammad Hijab or uh, Yasser Qadi. Beat them, beat them, you know, maybe they get the same blessings from Muhammad. Brother, we don't have the same blessings that, that obey God by beating the hell out of him through Muhammad, by Muhammad. We don't have that same blessing, brother. So these people love to be beaten by the Prophet, guys. Did you catch it? Anyway, yeah, this, you know, guys, I found this on the CCI Ministries video. She was commenting on it. But I found this part that I really wanted to address. Watch. Okay, in different libraries, okay, we even have complete copies. The Husseini Mosque manuscript, which yes. is from the first century in Cairo, okay, Husseini Mosque manuscript is from the first century of Islam. It's in Cairo. Mm -hmm. It is 99%, 99% complete. The complete so, text of the... So did you catch what uh, Adnan Rashid said, guys? Did you catch what he said? What did he say, basically, guys? He said that the Husseini manuscript, the Husseini manuscript is from the time of Uthman and it's 99% as the Quran of Hafs. That's what he's saying, right? 9%, 99% complete. The complete text of the Quran. Only mm -hmm. first two or three pages are missing. Guys, it's 99% complete. Only a uh, couple pages are missing. How is it complete, you idiot? How is it complete if there are missing pages from the Quran? How is the Quran perfectly preserved if there are missing pages? You see the poo, -poo that comes out of the mouth of these people, man? Brother, the Quran is perfectly preserved, but there are pages missing. Look at this logic. Uh, brother, what did you smoke this morning? Adnan Rashid, brother, what did you smoke this morning? Lay down the pipe, son. First, two or three pages are missing. <laughs> Surah, Surah Al-Fatiha. So the Quran is not complete. Oh, sorry, guys. I did something terrible. And maybe one, uh, the, uh, the very early verses of uh, Surah Baqarah okay. are missing. Sorry. Okay. The rest okay. of the Quran is there. Hosseini mm -hmm. Mosque Manuscript. So it's not there because there are pages missing, brother. How is it there? <laughs> How is it there? So, guys, the Quran, according to the Muslims, is perfectly preserved. Preserved means pages are missing. That's what according to the Muslim logic means. Pages are missing, brother, but it's still perfectly preserved. Allah made sure to protect the Quran, but yes, there are pages missing, brother. Do you, guys, do, do you understand? Do you understand the logic of these people? Truly, Islam does kill and eat brain cells like a Virus. This is why I always say in my prayer, please God protect us from the Quran virus because it's a brain eating virus. Brain eating virus. How is it perfectly preserved? How did Allah protect the Quran while there are pages missing? He just confirmed it. IQ says, to be honest, Rob, no. To be honest, Rob, what? No. Uh, IQ, what you're trying to say? I want to understand what you're saying. What are you trying to say, IQ? <clears throat> IQ, what are you trying to say? Do they have logic in Islam and give a reply to that? No, exactly. So they don't have a logic. So how can they even give a logic reply, right? This is the logic of the Muslims. Brother, Allah said in the Quran, He will protect the Quran from corruption. But, brother, there are pages missing, brother. So that means, according to Islamic logic of these people, that means the Quran is perfectly preserved. He, he, he confirmed it, right guys?
He confirmed it. Surah Al-Fatiha and maybe one uh, the, uh, the very early verses of uh, Surah Baqarah are missing. Are missing. The are rest missing. of the Quran is there. <laughs> of uh, Surah Baqarah are missing. Are missing. The rest of the Quran is... Uh, perfect. Preserved. Missing pages, brother. <laughs> brother, it's the Uthmanic, perfectly preserved Uthmanic Quran, brother. Thank you, D-Terminator, for the super chat, Gulbesh. Yeah, guys, I just, um, I, I had a disconnect, so make sure to refresh. Uh, Satan is attacking us, guys. Satan does not like us to destroy this man-made cult. Okay. Yeah, exactly before Abraham I am. He's, uh, our brother is saying, how can it be the same? All manuscripts have dots. It can be from the 7th century. Exactly. It's from 1924. <laughs> you idiot. You idiot. And on top of that, guys, we have the Hafs Quran that included Al-Fatiha which the Husseini manuscript did not have. You just confirmed it, you idiot. Pages are missing. Text of the Quran. Only first two or three pages are missing. <laughs> Surah, Surah Al-Fatiha. is gone. The most often repeated Fatiha, the o most often repeated Surah, which is Surah 1, is missing. How is it perfect preserved Quran, brother? Please explain this. I want to un understand your logic, brother. Surah Al-Fatiha and a couple of verses of Al-Baqarah are missing. But brother, the Quran is preserved, brother. So how is this manuscript perfectly preserved? Actually, the Husseini manuscript proves that the Quran that you have now is not the same. Yeah, maybe the goat ate this. Maybe the goat ate Surah 1. Brother, and, and these people, they are accepting, they are accepting, are you, you Muslims are accepting what he's saying? Do you accept the, his logic, brother? Truly, there's something wrong with you if you are still a Muslim in 2020, when you're going to get duped and fooled and deceived by these rats. This Adnan rat sheet, rat, he's a rat, rat sheet, and I'm not trying to insult any real rats, brother. King Buddy, thank you for the donation. Uh, he says, I got a perfect score on my Islam exam, a 98%. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the super chat, my friend. Oh, man. L let me spank this idiot. You heard him, guys. You heard him. He said it's from the first century, i.e. it's Othmanic, according to this guy. You heard him, right? It's Othmanic. It's from the first century. That's what he said. Just to confirm it, guys. 9%, 99% mosque manuscript is manuscript, which is from the first century. We what have is, complete what is, copies. The what? Husseini mosque manuscript, which the is from the manuscript first century. Is from this first century. You heard him, right, guys? That means, according to this liar, he's lying. Let me show you why he's lying in a moment, guys. So, according to him, the Husseini manuscript of the Quran is from the first century. We already refuted that it's not uh, Uthmanic, right? Sorry, it's not, uh, it does not agree with today's Quran, the Hafs Quran, because there are pages missing, especially Al-Fatiha, which is one of the most important surahs. But let me also refute that it's not Uthmanic, it's not from the first Islamic century. So, i.e., it's not Uthmanic. Watch. Watch, guys. Let me switch screens and destroy this liar. Watch. Let me make this bigger, guys. I hope it's crystal clear for you. Guys, those are, that you see on the screen, basically in a nutshell, these are the well-known manuscripts that you see here. Those are the well-known manuscripts. The top copy, which is not Uthmanic, right? It's not Uthmanic. Samarkand, top copy is in Turkey, Istanbul, guys. You have the Samarkand, which is in Uzbekistan, the Samarkand. You have the Ma'il, and you have the Husseini. This one is he, he's talking about. Look how big it is, guys. It does not have dots. 
It has no vowels, but the Hafs Quran has dots and have vowels. It does not agree as we already confirmed this with today's Hafs. Why? Because Surah 1 is missing and he already confirmed it. The Al-Fatiha is missing and couple of verses from Al-Baqarah. -Bak so it's not complete and it's certainly not authentic. And you have the, I can't pronounce this word, Petropolitanus. Okay, Petropolitanus. Also not Uthmanic, and the Sana'a, also not Uthmanic, not complete. Muslims, you have an issue. All your famous manuscripts are not Uthmanic, do not agree with today's Hafs Quran, and are not complete. Not Uthmanic, not from the 7th century, not complete, and they do not agree with today's Quran, the 1924 Hafs Quran. Forget about the wash because if we go there, it's make it even more worse. Now, let us go to the Husseini because he talked about Husseini, not me. Right? So, two Turkish scholars, guys, two Turkish scholars, they did some investigation. This guy, Isa Noglu, and this guy, Dr. Tyre Altikulaj, this guy, they had access to the manuscript that you, that we showed you, all of these manuscripts, including the Husseini to Top Kapi and the Samarkand and the Sana'a, those four that you see here, those are the most important ones to go to. Look what they are saying. We have none of Uthmanic, Uthman's Musahaf, which means the manuscripts. So they are gone. The Uthmanic manuscript does not exist. It's gone. It's missing. And certainly they are not Uthmanic, nor do we have any copies from those Mus'hafs. These Mus'hafs date from the later, much later, because remember, guys, the fourth Caliphs, including Uthman, the, fourth, the, the uh, first four Caliphs, like let's say Abu Bakr, it started with Abu Bakr, right guys? Bear with me guys, I want to type it out for you. Abu Bakr who is the father of Aisha, the first caliph, then Omar, then Uthman, and then Ali. Those four. So what is this guy saying? So those are the four first caliphs. This guy is saying, those manuscripts that you see here on the screen, and the Husseini one that uh, Adnan Rashid mentioned, this Husseini one, are not Uthmanic. They come much later. They start to appear in the Umayyad period. Did you catch it? Guys, are you following? Or is this too heavy information for you? Is this too heavy, guys? Guys, are you still following? So in other words, Islam, the Islamic Ummah, the Islamic nation today, they don't have any manuscript from the Uthmanic period. The, the manuscript that you see here came after Uthman. Much after Uthman. So where is the Quran of Uthman? Remember, Uthman ordered Zayd ibn Thabit to collect and compile the Quran in a perfect copy, as if the Quran of Muhammad was not already perfect enough. So he gave him the command, Zayd ibn Thabit. He rejected Ubay. He rejected Ibn Mas'ud. Right? And he ordered him to make nine copies. Show us one copy. We're not asking for all nine copies. Show us one Uthmanic copy that is from the time of Uthman, from the 7th century, that is complete and agrees with today's Quran. These two, Muslim, Sunni Muslim, Turkish scholars are saying this. They had access to it. They study it. All of these manuscripts. And they came to the conclusion that the Quran of Uthman does not exist anymore. It's lost. It's lost. So the Quran manuscripts that you see on the screen came later, much later after Uthman. And if we go, we already, right? We already confirmed that already, right guys? So let's see the Husseini that Adnan Rashid is talking about. Do you see it? It's in front of you guys. Al Husseini Cairo manuscript comes from the 8th century. So from the Umayyad Caliphate, the Umayyad era, after Ali, remember Abu Bakr, Omar, 
Uthman, then Ali, and after that, the Husseini manuscripts was made. Mid 8th century, it's dated from early to mid 8th century, and uh, there's a French scholar, he even says that it's, it could be even much later than that, from the 9th century. And this is one of the Turkish scholars, right? Who study it. Look, Dr. Tayyar Atikulic. It's not Uthmanic. Do you see it? It's not Uthmanic. The Husseini manuscript that Atnan Rashid is talking about, it's not Uthmanic. And it's dating from early to mid 8th century. And another French scholar who investigated it, he took pictures of this manuscript. He's even claiming that it's 9th century. So it's even more worse than that. So Mr. Uh, Adnan Rashid, why are you lying? Guys, let me give you the link to this uh, article. Share it, copy it, save it. You evil liars, man. Do you have any shame, Mr. Adnan Rashid? Do you have any shame? No, you, do, you have no shame, right? Muslims, where is your Uthmanic Quran? I want to know. And they're even talking about the uh, other Sana'a manuscript. Look. What does it say about this one? Many deviations. The Sana'a is even more. It is many, you know... We know that uh, our brothers Jay Smith and uh, Al Fadi, they are doing a lot of investigation. They are putting a lot of time in the Sanam manuscript, but this one is also not authentic. Remember what the what the scholars say? We have none of Uthman's musahaf. This is a Sunni scholar. Nor do we have any copies from those musahaf. They are missing. They are go gone. The existence one, including the top copy, including the Sana'a, including the Husseini, and what, and, and so on and so on. All these manuscripts that you see here come much later after Uthman. So where is the Uthmanic copy? It's gone. It's missing. So Rashid, you have been spanked. You have been refuted. And look, the same obey that we were talking about, guys. Look what he's saying. From a Sahih Hadith. Ubay said to me, Ubay, that Ubay ibn Kaab, yes, that one. I just gave you the link, uh, blame Heraitis. Let me give you the link again. Let me give it again to you. So look what Ubay is saying. How long is Surah Al Ahzab, right? This chapter. How long is it when you read it? So one, this guy is asking this guy, Ubay, how long? Ubay ibn Kaab said to me, how long is Surah Al-Ahzab when you read it? This one. Well, here, today, it's, let's see how long it is. It's 73 ayahs. Do you see it, guys? The number 73. So Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33 is 73 ayahs today was it also as long as today's no watch look what this same obey is saying or how many verses do you think it is we just explained to you today it's 73 i said to him 73 verses right 73 verses do you see it guys he said only 73 Obey is saying only 73? There was a time when it was as long as Surat Al-Baqarah. And we are reading it. The old man and the old woman, if they commit zina, adultery, then stone both of them. Ah, Wait, wait, wait. If we scroll down, guys, if we go through Surat Al-Baqarah, Right? He said it's as, as long as Surah Al-Baqarah. It used to be as long as Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah, if you scroll down, this is the last ayah, 286. Let us do some 
Guys, yeah, holes, holes, brother, holes. 286 minus today's <laughs> Surat al Ahzab. How many ayahs are missing? Let me use calculator, guys. 286 minus 73. 213 missing ayahs from Surat al Ahzab. From Surat Al Ahzab, which is chapter 33. Brada, where is the original complete Quran, Brada? I think that goat of Aisha came to eat it. Remember the verses of stoning? We played a video today for you guys. Remember my video that I uploaded about Farida? This video that you have watched? Remember that one? <laughs> so, that same goat ate 213 ayahs from Surah Al-Ahzab, which included stoning, right? Stoning. So that's where the stoning verses used to, used to stay. And the goat ate them. The goat of Aisha ate them. 213 missing ayahs from Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33. From this chapter that you see here. Look how many ayahs here, down here, guys, down here. There should be more more than 200 ayahs, but they are gone. Because the goat ate them. The goat was hungry, man. That goat was hungry. So how dare you to claim that you Muslims have the Quran of Muhammad. It's gone. Do you have any idea how many ayahs are missing? And I think if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Omar said, I think it was Omar. Was it Omar? If I, I, I'm not sure, guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure about the name of that Sahabi, but it's somewhere in the Hadith. He said, don't say that you have all the ayahs of the Quran. Don't ever make that claim. It's, you don't have all the ayahs. They are missing. And Obey just confirmed it. This is... Very sahih, brother. Do you see it? This is a clearly sahih. It's not. The, the, the transmission, right, of chain is very sahih, brother. As clear as the sun. Let me give you the link to this. And by the way, this is a fatwa by Sheikh Muhammad Salih al Munajid, a Sunni Salafi PhD Sheikh, confirming this. That it's very, very sahih, it's not, brother. Right? Sa more than 200 ayahs missing. 213 to be specific. Missing from chapter 33 of the Quran. Brother, so it's not only Al-Fatiha, brother. It's not only Surah Al-Baqarah, brother. There are many chapters that have missing ayahs. Brother, that goat was hungry, man. This evil goat, man. Even Allah could not protect the Quran from this goat. This is why this goat of Aisha is the number one most wanted goat in the whole history of goats. Guys, do you think the goat became a goat al kareem Like the Quran? Because, you know, if you can eat the Quran of Allah, right? And the Quran is... Al-Quran al kareem so we can say that the goat became al kareem You see, lies on top of lies. Exactly, Karian. How, how many Muslims know this? That Surah Al-Ahzab used to be as big as chapter 2. 286. But here we have only, today, only 73. In chapter 33. It was as big as the biggest surah. Because guys. The chapter of the cow. Surah Al-Baqarah. The chapter of the cow. Was as big as Surah Al-Ahzab. According to Ubay. Remember what did. Uh, uh, what did the guy say? Guys what did he say? What did Yasir Qadi say? About Ubay. Remember what he said? Let us go see again what he said. Let's see what he said about him. and that there are different ahruf and whatnot. This is in the version of Muslim Ahmad. Ubayy ibn Ka'ab says, authentic hadith, فَدَخَلَ فِي نَفْسِي شَكْ 
in my heart a doubt came. I mean, I would have been doubting too, spouses, brother. This is the days of Jahiliya. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. This is not a joke, brother. The issue of Ahruf and Qiraat caused confusion to somebody whom the Prophet said, if you want to listen to the Quran directly, listen to Ubay. Ubay is Ubay, the same Ubay, guys. Average Sahabi. He is the Qari of the Quran. He is he the hot He is the, he is the daddy is. of daddies. And he goes, <laughs> The daddy of the Quran, brother. And the Prophet put, it, yeah. put his yeah. hand. Yeah. Yeah. He, the Prophet, yeah, he put only the hand, brother. He did not beat the hell out of him. He only put the hand, brother. You liars. We already spanked him about that, right, guys? As you noticed. So see how important this obey is? This is not a nobody. This is a very important guy, guys. Right? This is not a nobody that is saying that the Quran is missing, right? Remember, this is Obey Ibn Ka'ab, the same Obey Ibn Ka'ab, who is confirming that chapter of the cow, Surah Al-Baqarah, was as big. Look, there was a time when it was as big, as long as Surah Al-Baqarah. But they are more than 200 missing, 213, right? As we calculated, 213 missing. Wow. You send me a question. <clears throat> Someone sent me a question through Skype. Bibib, you send me a question. Uh, let's see. Right. I want to. I don't want to go there. To be honest with you, my friend. You know, it's not my topic of today. We already talked about that many times. To be honest with you, you know. The burden. You're talking about the burden, right? We already showed you that Muhammad himself said that Muslims in the Hadith, Muslims will come with sins as heavy as mountains. And Allah, Allah himself in the Quran saying no one can bear the burdens of anyone. But Muhammad contradicting his Allah in the Quran, in the Hadith, Muhammad contradicting Allah saying that Muslims will come with sins as heavy as mountains and Allah will take the, the sins of those Muslims and we will place them on the shoulders of the Jews and the Christians. So that's a huge contradiction. But that's off topic brother. I don't want to go too much into that. <clears throat> any Muslim guys? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Is there any Muslim who has courage and the knowledge to call us, to refute us? I challenge you to refute us. And by this we can conclude our uh, live show, guys. If there are Christians who wants to call, you can call. The line is open for the Christians too. I know my voice is gone, guys. We are two hours and nine minutes live already. Any any calls from the Christians? Maybe you have a question, maybe you want to share something. The line is open, guys. Any Muslim? <laughs> ZX8, you, you want to challenge my goat impersonation? Now actually, if you want to challenge someone, go challenge uh, Farid, brother. Farid can, nobody can out-goat Farid. I kid you not. You already proved that today. Farid and his goat, brother. Brother, 
Have you seen my video, guys, of today? Did you see it? Did you watch it? About Ferida? Well, nobody can outgoat him, man. I believe that it did. Let's see. And here's Amit. He said, suckling by a sheep. You just to show you how stupid this guy is. Are you stupid? Yes. Are you stupid? <laughs> yes. So if one of them says yes. it's abrogated and the other one he says it's eaten by the by the goat, there's no there's no there's no contradiction there. I mean you're, you're such a fan. Hey brother, <laughs> I was looking for that part. Go ahead, bro. Your life on air. Hi, brother Rob. Hi, how are you? Hey, I'm fine, man. I'm having fun here, man. Spanking. It's another spanking day, brother. Yes, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, brother, I have uh, just a question. Uh, the Birmingham manuscript, this this oldest manuscript from. 580 to 600. Brother, brother who told you that is the oldest. That's a joke. Brother, That's a lie. brother, brother. I just want to say it's only the skin. When you look at uh, the Arabic, it's with dots. Brother, it's a joke. They, scholars don't even want to study it because it has dots. Uh, like you said, only the skin. Guys, remember. Maybe, maybe only the skin is from this yeah, day. Alexander, let but... me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you something. Back in the old days, let's say 1400 years ago, the skin that you want to write on, and it's a lot of work to produce that kind of writing material. It's very expensive. So what did they do? They used to keep it for very long, right? Let's say you keep it maybe for 70 years. Someone gave you that kind of skin. It's, you know, only rich people used to have such animal skin to write it on. So they had to process it do all kind of stuff to it so that you can finally write on it because animal skin, normally you cannot write on animal skin, right? So they had to make it really soft or whatever they want. They had to process it before you, you can write something on it. So people used to uh, keep Blanco, the skin that is not written yet on it for many years. So the skin is not as old as the ink on the skin. So, how how do we know that it's not Orthmanic? How do we know that is certainly not from the seventh century? Because when we look <laughs> look at it, it has dots. When did the dots yes. appear? When did the, the dots appear in the late eight, eight ninth century? Late eight. Yeah, eight late late eight nine late tenth eight. century. Yeah. So that's when Al Hajjad Hajjaj. Remember Yusuf Al Hajjaj? Hajjaj? Yes. He was the one who started to dot and vowel the Arabic text. So they used to keep the animal skin for a long time. And then when they felt the need to use it, and in, in this case, what is more important than the Quran, right? So they used it to write the Quran on it. But it only has two volios, only two yes. volios. <laughs> not even, uh, you know, maybe not, not even one complete Even, even not the same text. Yes, only two, and, and on, two on basically two pages, right? Two pages and even the text is not the same. So Muslims, is the Quran only two pages? No. Is it complete? No. Does it have dots? Yes. Is it Othmanic? No. There you go. So it's not even worthy to call it a manuscript. It's not a manuscript, brother. It's not like uh, the stuff that you see on the screen, right? These are manuscripts. You know, look at how, how huge it is. This is called a manuscript. Not only two pages. So it's not even worthy to call it a manuscript. No. So Muslims no, are bankrupt, I, man. They are bankrupt. They have nothing. The Quran of Uthman is gone. It's 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 lost in history. Top copy is not Uthmanic. Samarkand is not Uthmanic. Husseini is not Uthmanic. The Sana'a is not Uthmanic. It's gone. No, nothing is there. Nothing. No, yeah, nothing. Nothing. The Quran is gone, brother. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. The Quran. Brother, we can conclude that the Quran is only. A, <laughs> From 1924, and the old Qurans were all thrown in the Nile River by Al Azhar, and we can say that Prince Philip of the United Kingdom is older than the Quran of Allah because he was born before, right? I think 1921, right, guys? If I'm not mistaken, Prince Philip was born in 1921. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
maybe 22, 19, yeah, I, I'm not sure about the date. But Prince Philip is older than the Quran of Allah. That's, that's a fact. Yes, they, they can celebrate in four years the 100 year old Quran. Yeah. Exactly. I just, yes, I just want to say it's, it's maybe only the skin because the text has dots and the dots is late 8th century. Yeah. It, it's impossible, it's impossible to be the oldest Quran. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, guys, this is what I'm trying to say, right? This is what I'm trying to say. This is Prince Philip, guys. Prince Philip is older than the Quran of Allah. He's born in 1921. Do you see it? The Quran of Allah, the Hafs Quran, is 1924. So he's three years older than the Quran. This is this gentleman here, he is older than the Quran of Allah, and he's still alive. Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. He's older than the Quran of Allah. Can you imagine? <laughs> 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 brother, brother, I think I think there is a hadith. Uh, it says Abu Bakr claims the Quran uh, was eighty six or eighty seven percent bigger than the Quran today. Yes, I think yes. I think it's I think it's hadith. It's, it's a hadith. Yes, I, I mentioned this right. One of the Sahaba, I can't remember if, if it was Omar or Ali, I, I think it was Omar. He said, don't say, Omar, yes. yeah, don't say that we have the complete Quran. Don't say that. Don't say that. Let's see if we can find it. I'm not sure if I can find it right, right, right now. I can't, I can't remember but, the, the exact number. Uh, but I think it was Omar. He says, don't claim we have the Quran because it was yeah. 10 times bigger. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Give, bear with us, guys. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> mm. <sighs> I'm looking for it. I'm too. Uh, let's see, there are so many hadith, right? Sometimes when you look for a hadith, you will not find it. But sometimes I, I can find something within seconds, bro. But this one is more, maybe more tricky. But I believe uh, it's on sunnah.com. Uh, maybe the admins can look for it too. So we can share it on the screen. Uh, I can't find it. I, I'm trying to find, you know what I'm finding at the moment? It, it says, you know, it's talking about Surah, uh, about the ayahs of stoning, that it's missing. They are missing. Yes, this, this, tour, yeah. this, this one Surah was exact the same size like, yeah. like Bakara. Yeah. I, I'm fine. I'm finding overwhelming amount of, you know, <laughs> the stoning that are missing the eyes of stoning and whatnot and adult breastfeeding, but I don't find what I'm looking for. Boop, boop, boop. Um. Yeah, we read it, you know, about the stoning, we read it and memorize it and then it's gone. <laughs> There are so many same repeated hadith, bro. It's overwhelming. Yes, brother. But uh, I just want to mention, I I have uh, really, I think I have every book of hadith at home. Yeah. And I here, can't. Here. I, I, I found something. Maybe this, this is interesting. It's a long hadith. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq sent for me when the people of Ya, ya, ya Mama, don't say your mama, guys. It's Ya Mama. <laughs> had been killed. So people of Yamama had been killed, i.e. number of the prophets of the companions. Look guys, and they were people who memorized the Quran by heart, right? And they were getting slaughtered and found Umar bin al-Khattab sitting with him. Abu Bakr then said to me, Umar has come to me and said, casualties were heavy among the Quran, which means the ones who recited the Quran by heart. 
right? I.e. those who knew the Quran by heart. Do you see it, guys? On the day of battle of your mom, I mean your, your mama, uh, your mama, and I'm afraid that more heavy casualty may take place among the Qurra, the ones who memorize the Quran. So guys, those people were memorizing the Quran and verses went missing. Gone, poof. On other benefits, whereby a large part of the Quran may be lost. Wow. 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 You see? Yes. So don't say that you have the Quran. Remember, Surah Al Ahzab, chapter 33, according to Ubay ibn Ka'ab, was as long as Surah Al Baqarah, which has 200, what did, what did we say? 286. So 286 minus 73, we get 213 ayahs are missing according to Ubay. Do you see it? And, in, and, and he is the... The, the guy too. You heard the you, guy you, who he is. <laughs> yeah, he's the guy who, is, who he is according to... Uh, this guy is like uh, the, the, the daddy of the daddies. <laughs> the daddy of the Quran, yes. Yeah. Of, re of recitation of Quran. You heard Yasser Qadi, right guys? This guy. He, he was saying it, not me. He's the daddy of the daddy <laughs> of the Quran. Yes. Oh man. And brother, I, I can't find any any hadith which confirmed that uh, Jibril came and revealed seven times the same verse in seven dialects. Mm. There is only this hadith from Muhammad, uh, the claim from Muhammad, Jibril revealed seven mm. dialects, but there is not a single story uh, which can uh, can uh, mm can verify this this hadith i don't know bro i'm, I'm still Not looking i'm still looking for the the hadith i really yes, want to bro show brother it. brother yeah. watching the in the chat iphone 3g has uh i think this mm. i i mean this umar said at the sakifa that the quran has one million twenty seven thousand letters that's yeah. not even 30 percent of that from today exactly yeah but yes that's correct. That's 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 certainly correct. But, Suyuti, page eighty-eight. Yeah, but I'm trying to find before they're going to say. You know how Muslims are. Yeah, brother, yes, that's yes, daif, yes. brother. It's daif, brother. So I'm trying to find it on Sunnah.com. I think this is not on Sunnah.com. A, a Suyuti, yeah. I think, is not. I know, on I know, I, I know, I know that, bro. I know. But I'm trying to find the hadith that I was talking about. Uh. Da, da, da. Anyway, I can't this find is, this it at is, the, at the, at this, this is moment. exact, the iPhone yeah. 3G posted exact this hadith, I mm. mean this hadith, yeah. that million twenty seven thousand letters. Yes, yes. Tafsir al-Ithqan by al-Suyuti, yeah. Very, very highly respected uh, scholar in Islam, yeah. Page 88, Omar said at the Saqifah that the Quran has one million and twenty seven thousand letters. Quran today has not even 30% of that, exactly. Maybe even more worse than that. Right? Yes. So we are actually trying to be politically correct here. Imagine guys how big the Quran used to be. And we just, we are only showing you on the screen here that according to the Obey ibn Kaab, remember the Obey ibn Kaab, we can show the Sahih al-Bukhari by the way. Uh, uh, Ubay ibn Mas'ud, what Muhammad said, why is Ubay so important guys? Here is why. From the mouth of Muhammad, and this is very, 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 very sahih hadith. This is sahih al-Bukhari, brother. Look what Muhammad said. Abdullah ibn Amr mentioned Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and said, I ever loved that man, for I heard the Prophet saying, take the Quran, so Muhammad said, Take the Quran from four, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Salim, and Ubay ibn Ka'b. But here, where are the, where's the fourth one? One? Muad. Mu 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 oh Mu yeah, Muad yeah, Mu and Mu Ubay ibn Ka'b. Yeah, those, those are four. So one, Ibn Mas'ud, the number one. Actually, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is even more important than Ubay because he's not mentioned as, as first. Then you have Salim, and you have Muad, and you have Ubay ibn Ka'b. That same Ubay is saying that 
213 ayahs from chapter 33 are missing from Surah Al-Ahzab. That same guy, that's that same guy that Yasser Al-Qadi was praising, right? He was yes, so now, praising. Now him. we know. Now we know where the doubts come from. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> this same obey, this same obey was having a doubt, and Muhammad beat the hell out of him. Remember, we showed you. Muhammad beat the hell out of him. No, brother, he touched him. He touched yeah. him. Yeah, he touched him. Yeah. Yes, brother. Brother, I have a question about the hadith. Uh, I read a name, but I can't find anything about this guy. Uh, and the hadiths are only in Arabic. It's uh, maybe, the man. Maybe you should send it to me in, uh, in Skype, bro. Umda, umda al Ahkam. Mm. Umda al Ahkam, volume 3, hadith number 460. Mm. Uh, now, the. The battery is gone. I will send you, brother. It's okay. it's a very I no I send it to me. I send it. Uh, yeah, I, I I have I have sent it you. I send it you. Okay. It, I will I will Skype. look I will look at it and maybe we'll see if we can use it in the future live show. If it's yes, I I can't find anything in English enough about it. for the Muslims. If it's not sahih enough for the Muslims, you know you know. No 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 no. We don't, yeah. we don't use it. We don't use it. Yeah. The so, only, only, the only daif source we use is the Quran, brother. Yeah, That's enough. Exactly, <laughs> That's brother. Enough. The the Quran that is has missing, missing, missing a lot of missing ayahs. Yeah. Yes, of course, brother. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling, God, brother. God bless you, brother, and God have a nice you. day. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye. Bye bye. Any more calls, guys? <clears throat> Any more calls? Uh, Omar, Omar Khadija, Omar Khadija, or Khadija, whatever your name is. If you think you have the courage and the knowledge to call me, call me live on air. We are here, we are live. Yes, you're live on air. Hello, can you listen to me? Yes, I can listen to you. Yes. Okay. Please so, mute, yeah. mute YouTube. Mute YouTube. And only talk no, through I, Skype. I'm Skype. I just follow you on YouTube and see you. Uh, mute, oh. mute Skype. Uh, mute, sorry, mute YouTube. Only talk through Skype, please. I'm hearing my voice double. Mute YouTube. I can listen to you, <laughs> but I'm hearing myself double. You see what? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, we are talking about uh, something. So you forget about your own own script, and you are talking about the other script. What? C come again? Like, I, what? Can you listen to me? Yeah, I can listen to you. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's 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 go. You said that Quran, but some some verses of the Quran are missing, and then now we are talking about something missing, missing. Yes. Is this the manuscript missing or the memorized missing? The difference between my own manuscript missing. And the memory, it's why I memorize something. I I get it down. Where it is missing, I have it in my brain. I have it in my heart. I can I can read it down. I'm about you're talking about something, something. Uh, brother, listen. Do have you ever heard of Obey bin Kaab? Uh, all this, all this stuff have it, but one of uh, one that is that you are mentioning, he says some manuscript is missing. Does not to me. My friend, slow down, slow down, slow down. I'm, so it's what? so I can understand what you're saying. Slow down. Take it easy. We are we are, we are here. We are your life. Uh, if you like, we can make even else also a cup of coffee. We have very beautiful admins. So take it easy. We can, you know, so we can understand what you're saying. Easy, easy. Go ahead. Okay. You okay. say. Yeah. Uh, can you listen to me now? Yeah, I can listen to you. Yeah. You say some manuscript of Quran is missing. And some basis of stone and the... And stone are missing. Those buses that you pick. Who is saying that? Is it is it me saying that, or is it or is it Obey bin Kaab say that? Let me explain to you, man. Okay, explain to me, brother. Go ahead. I'm I'm listening to you. Those buses that you say that is missing. It's when the manuscript is missing. I wanna is mentioned in the hadith. The manuscript is missing, but it is it is still memorized in the heart of the believers. So when it come back, it can read it down. 
Okay, so according to our Bayman Kaab, more than 200 verses are missing because Surah Al Ahzab, chapter 33 of the Quran, used to be as big as Surah Al Baqarah, 286 ayahs to be specific. So 213 ayahs, according to Ubay ibn Kaab, are missing. Do you see it say, Ubay ibn Kaab said to me, how long is Surah Al Ahzab when you read it? Or how many verses do you think it is? I said to him, 73 verses. And then Ubay ibn Kaab, that Ubay ibn Kaab, yes, that guy, he said, only, only that? Only 73? Uh, there was a time, you, let me finish, let me finish, you, let me finish. Let me finish. Me? Okay, I will, I will, let me finish. There you was a time when it was as long as Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm, I'm going to listen, 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 Abdul, listen. It's a, a, Ubay, Ubay ibn Kaab said, there was a time when it was as yes. long as Surah Al-Baqarah. Did you understand? And we read it. The old man and the old woman, if they are commit dinner, then stone them both. A punishment from Allah, and Allah is Almighty Most Wise. Yes, exactly. And so where yes, is this that's ayah? That's what where is hey, this ayah? Of, so go scroll down, go scroll down, go scroll go, go, Okay, go where ahead. is the ayah, my friend? Where is the ayah of stoning then, according to you? The ayah of stoning is the yeah, first where is it? The, so can, like, we, let me, can we find ayah, it in the Quran? Let me so. Let me explain to you, if you can listen to me. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. The first basis of stone of that is only basis I clear in the first Islamic. What? Come again? Can you listen? Yeah, can I you can listen, listen but, but take it easy so that I can understand you. You have a very difficult dialect to understand. Please slow down so we can understand you because people are complaining in the live chat. They cannot understand what you're saying. Take it easy, slow down so we can understand what you're saying. Because I'm sure or something like this, because uh, I have something in my, like, English is not in my tongue, that is why. Yeah, okay, so take it easy, slow down, so we can follow what you say. Go, come again, please repeat what you said. As you, as you show in the screen, you said, yes, can you yes, listen? Yes, I can listen. The basis you say that, one of the beds said, it's long, so to, one of the, it's long, dense, so to, back again. Yes, Surah Al Ahzab was as long as Surah Al Baqarah. Yes, according to Abu Bakr Kab, and it contained the ayah of stoning. Can you show me what happened to it? What, what made it abrogated? So basically, what you're saying, it got abrogated, right? This is why it's not to be found in the Quran anymore, right? Is that what you're saying? Hello. Hello. Can you listen to me? Yeah, I can listen to you. So, where, where is the eye of stoning? Tell us where the eye of stoning uh, go. Where is it? Hello? Yeah, hello? I can listen to you. Explain, please. Okay, he's gone. I can listen to you, brother, but, brother, I'm asking you a question. Hello, hello, and it's the hello game. Nasundan, you said there is no such words. Where is it then? Because it used to be in Surah Al Ahzab. So what happened to it? You, you Muslims say it's abrogated. A goat ate it, according to your Muslim sources. So it got abrogated. Abrogated by what? I mean, it, you have to have something that abrogates something. So what abrogated the eye of stoning? Because it's not in the Quran anymore, right? That's what I want to understand. Now, Sundan, what abrogated the ayah of stoning? What abrogated it? Because it's missing, right? It's not in the Quran anymore. It used to be part of this chapter. So what happened to it and what made it, it uh, to be abrogated? Which ayah, which chapter, which ayah made it abrogate the stoning? Aya. Fair question, right guys? I think it's a fair question to ask. Now Sundan, what happened to it? This is a very Sahih Hadith, brother. You see? This is a clearly Sahih Isnad, brother. As clear as the sun, in which there is no fault, end quote. Even if you go to Ibn Kathir, said, 
This is a Hassan Isna. This is implies that there were more verses in it than the wording and ruling were abrogated. Abrogated by what? Yeah, hello? Hello? I'm, I'm yeah. come back because of the okay. lack of vocabulary that I use. Yeah, yeah, okay. I listen you, okay. brother. Explain. I okay. listen. Let us, start, let us start from the beginning of equal. Yeah, and start from that. zero. Start from zero, please. <laughs> I listen let you. Go ahead, go ahead. Quran in the ayah 15 verse 9, it was have said that Allah said it, it is we have sent down the, the one as a remembrance means of Quran and yeah. sure we will guide it from the corruption. Yes. Yes, Allah mentioned in the Quran in chapter 15 verse 9. Okay. Yes, so this is the one of the authentication of the Quran. Okay. And Muslims have no doubt that Quran is exactly the same today as it was more than 140 years ago when it was basically built to the Prophet Okay, Muhammad. okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let us go with you. Let us go with you. According so, to Ubay, listen carefully, brother. According to Ubay ibn Ka'ab, that Ubay ibn Ka'ab. Can, can you share me your screen? I can't see it now. Yes, it's on screen, brother. Look. That Ubay ibn Ka'ab said that Surah Al Ahzab, which is chapter 33, it was as big as chapter the cow, Surah Al Baqarah. So it had 200, at least 286 ayahs. More than 213 ayahs are missing because remember, 286 minus 73 is 213 ayahs missing. Only from this chapter. I'm not talking about any other chapter, only Surah Al Ahzab. So now that we can conclude that many eyes are gone missing, what made it go missing? That's number one question. And what made it abrogated it? We, have, we need something that abrogates something else. So what do we have in the Quran that abrogated those, all these ayahs? That's my question. Please answer. Okay. Can you okay. listen to me now? Yeah, I can listen to you. Go ahead. The bus that Ubed is talking about. Yes. The, I think, let me go. Let me go to your screen. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not in the YouTube, I'm just going to Skype here and the, I have to play it. Can you show the? Can you play it in the? Can you show the screen? Yeah, what? Go scroll down. Yeah, yeah. The screen is shown, brother. Put the link. Put the link of the side that you got. The Azo is Islam. Can you put it in the no channel? No problem. We can do everything. We, I can make you a cup of coffee too if you like. You like coffee? We have uh, lovely admins. We can make a nice cup of coffee. Maybe you want cookies too? It's, a, it's on the live chat. I posted it. Okay. Please I'm answer the question, please, my friend. Yes, I'm coming. I'm I, will, I will try to go to it. The hadith that you are talking about is hadith is Mughan Musna Ahmed that said 200 buses were abrogated upon the Surat al Ahzab. Is this? Uh -huh. Okay, and now? Where is my answer? I want an answer. This, let, let, let me go to the, what you are sharing and let's see. Ibn uh -huh. Kasi himself in his commentary said, There is Hasanat Isnad, this implies that there were more buses in it. Then they are warding and ruling were both. Brother, the brother, it's not Hassan. This is Sahih. Do you see it? Ah, so, so, I, the, the things that you sent me is that he is go and check it. Go and check the link that you sent me. He said, you want to Ibn Hazm, Ibn Hazm yeah. said, this is a clearly Sahih Isnad, Sahih. Speaking from Kif, Hira, Hira. Can you say, can, it's Sahih. Can you see, sahih. That, can you see the Ibn Kasir comment? Can you see the Ibn Kasir comment? On the above? Yes. What he said, can you read it? Okay, so the, someone, it, so Ibn Hazm, do you know who Ibn Hazm is? It is the Ip with, but there is no wrong with the Hadith as there is. Brother, is, the, okay, yes? question, question. Is Hassan, which means good, is it accepted? Yeah? Is Hassan, is Hassan, which means good, is it accepted in Islam? Hassan. Yeah, Mr. Hassan, is Hassan Hadith accepted? Yes or no? Sahih so Hadith. What about Hassan? Is it accepted or rejected? This is Hassan is not. He <laughs> Hassan is not. Brother, okay. this one, this scholar says it's clear, Sahih. As clear as, do you know how clear the sun is? In which there is no fault. So this scholar says it's clear as the sun. So Sahih. Ibn Kathir, his opinion says, 
This is a Hassan Hadith. It's not. Right? So the chain of variation is Hassan, which means good. Do you know the meaning of good? Maybe, maybe we should explain to this guy what the meaning of good means. Okay. So it says, Ibn Kathir continues. This implies that there were, there were more verses in the Quran than the wording and ruling were both abrogated. Okay. So Ibn Kathir says that it's abrogated. What made it abrogated it? What made these ayahs be abrogated? Remember, Surah Al-Ahzab was as big as Surah Al-Baqarah. 213 ayahs gone missing. What ayah, what chapter made it abrogate 213 ayahs? Poof, gone. I want an answer. Okay. okay. Where's the abrogation? What okay, abrogated you, 213 ayahs? Do you understand? Let you, let you, do you, brother, you do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Look, look, I don't like shouting. You made yeah, your comment. You. I look you, yeah. I made my you. own. Yeah. That's what it is. In the I link that you, you sent me, even the side. Yeah. Even the side that I said is the corner, is the answer to the question number two. And yeah, it says, you know what? You, brother, 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 the answer the, is the, Allahu the, Alam. That's the answer, right? Allahu Alam, brother. That's the answer, right? I look you, brother. It means the answer is Allahu Alam, right? Allah knows best. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello? Poor connection. Poor connection. Poor connection. Hello? Can you listen to me? I got your poor connection. Can you listen? Yeah, I can, I can listen to you, brother. Go ahead. Okay. 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 Regarding the hadith that you said to me, like one of one of one of the that say in the hadith, mm -hmm. with regards to the one abrogation of the basis, but no, but not the ruling, the part this occur in indicated by the Sahih report from the Umar bin Al Khattab and Ubay ibn Al Khattab, according to which he said, among the word of the Quran that where I build the word, the old mm -hmm. man and the old woman, if they are committed zina, they stone them both. You know that this bus no longer exists between the cover of the mushab or on the lips of the reciter. Also, the ruler remain epic Brother, wait, wait, wait. No Brother, are you going to read the entire uh, page for us? Bro, I, okay. can be, I can be here with you. The so whole he did, did. day, no so problem. I, read I, everything. I, 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 you see, read everything, so brother. Want to deceive, I wanna, I wanna deceive people? Brother, what made what made uh, Surat yeah. Al Ahzab uh, two hundred and thirteen uh, ayahs? What made it abrogated? What abrogated it? Maybe the ruling of the basis. Ruling of the bus. Can you get me? Get, yeah, I can get you, brother. What what ayah? What ayah of the Quran? Abrogated 213 verses from Surah Al Ahzab. Please answer me. You know, that bus no longer is it between the cover of the Mushab. I understand that. But what? where is the ayah that abrogated the 213 ayahs from Surah Al Ahzab? Answer my question, please. Look, guy, look, guys, how patient I am with this guy. Answer. I want an answer. I demand an answer for my question. Go ahead. If you don't know the uh, the answer, say Rob Christian. I don't know, and we can. Hello. Get... Yeah. Okay. We, we we're going to play the hello game, guys. Hello, brother. Hello. Oh, waste of time, man. I think my question is crystal clear, guys. How many times do I need to repeat my question? Do you want me to sound like a broken record? According to Obey Ibn Kab. Yes, that Obey Ibn Kab. Surah Al Ahzab, which is chapter 33, this one was as big as this one. 213 ayahs are missing. Fine. Let us go with you. What ayah in the Quran made those ayahs be abrogated? Because remember, Allah in the Quran is saying, We caused something to be abrogated by sending down. Ayah similar like it or better ones. So which ayah abrogated the 213 ayahs from Surah Al Ahzab? I want an answer for my question, man. Hello, brother. Do you hear me, brother? You listen to me? No answer. Just say I don't know and say Allahu Alam. 
Right? Like Ibn Kathir. Allahu alam brada. You want a link? Okay, no problem. Right? Abrogated. Okay, fine. What made it abrogated? What abrogated it? Which ayah? Which chapter? No us. I mean, when you're going to say something, let me type it in the chat, guys. Something is abrogated. Okay, fine. What made it abrogated? Which ayah abrogated? Which ayah abrogated the missing 213 ayahs? Because it's abrogated, remember? It's gone. Poof. Right? Yeah, in Islam, by the way, guys. Scholars never agree, right? And the proof is in front of you. This guy says that it's sahih. Clear as the sun. So look how sahih it is. But Ibn Kathir says this is Hassan. Okay, Hassan is still good. It means good. So it's accepted. Okay, fine. This implies that there were more verses in Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, in it. Okay, fine. We will go with you. Then the wording and ruling were both abrogated. Abrogated by what? Hello, brother. Hello. Can you, can you listen to me, brother? Yes, I can listen to you, brother. I want my answer, brother. No answer. Oh, man. Uh, guys, if, if I show you his uh, picture, uh, look, man. Omar, he, okay, family, all of, all, all of them are Muslims. <sighs> yeah, the God of none. Yeah, you can call me, brother. It's yeah, Christians can call too. Brother Jacob, you can call me, bro. <clears throat> bro, I mean, I want an answer. You say it's abrogated, fine. But but what? By what? What made it? What made two hundred and thirteen ayahs be abrogated? Yes, uh, Jacob, you're life on air, brother. How are you? Hey, brother, can you hear me? Yeah, I can listen to you, but <laughs> hey. hi, my friend. How are you? <laughs> it was dynamic, man. I mean, brother Rob, I'm gonna tell you why because I have a hard teeth. Well, Bro, just before we go there, before we go there, brother, I asked him a really sincere question. I'm, I'm really trying. I'm, I'm trying to listen. I'm lately, maybe got, the guys are noticing. I'm trying to be more patient, more patient with Muslims, right? I was having a difficult time to understand because he was speaking fast. Nobody could follow him so i asked him a couple of times slow down slow down <clears throat> and i how many times did i repeat the, the question you you muslims according to your scholars right according to obey bin kab surat al ahzab chapter 33 was as big as long as surat chapter 2 surah al baqarah that has 286 286 minus 73 we have 213 ayahs missing fine we will go with you which ayah in which chapter abrogated the 213 ayahs? Is my question clear or am I talking in a different language that is not clear? It's clear. It's clear as day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know they have I, to I, I want I want my answer, man. I demand an answer, man. You know they have to play dumb because um after you know after what's his name? Quadri? Yazir Qadri, after he gave that statement. Yazir Qadri, yeah, Yazir Qadri. Yeah, Yazir Qadri. Yazir that's Qadri, it yeah. right there. That's that's all we need. They can't retract what he said. Mm. It's, it's imprinted in the YouTube computer galaxy, and there's no mm. way they can erase it. Mm. I mean, they made the admission, and we just following through with it, and people mm. like yourself and Christian Prince have already been saying it, so it's not like it's nothing new. We just finally got them to admit it yeah and we showed on the screen right uh we, we showed two names two sunni scholars from turkey right we even gave them gave the names and they both confirmed 
that all the manuscripts that Muslims have that they are so proud about the top copy, the Sana'a, the Husseini, the Petropolitanus, the Samarkand, and so on and so on. None of them are Uthmanic, right? Don't right. say that you have the Uthmanic Quran because the Musahif, right? The, the, the manuscripts are came after the Rashadun. Guys, the four first caliphs, we call them Al Rashidun, right? That's what they used. They were called Al Rashidun. The rightly gated caliphs. Those were Abu Bakr. Second one was Umar. Third one was Uthman. And the fourth one was Ali. Then, after that period, you had the Umayyad, Umayyad Caliphate, right? The Umayyad. So, where is the Uthmanic Quran? So, according to the scholars, the manuscript that you see on the screen came much after the Uthman. So Muslims, don't you dare say that you have the Uthman Quran because you are lying. The scholars have studied those manuscripts. One and the second one, Dr. Tayyar Altikulij. So Dr. Tayyar Altikulij, which is another Turkish Sunni Muslim and professor is Izanoglu, Ishanoglu. These two already confirmed that no Mus'haf that we have is Uthmanic. It's not complete, it's not Uthmanic. So where is the Quran of Uthman? It's gone, it's missing, it's lost, it's poof. <coughs> Go ahead, brother. Okay, I have a hadith where Muhammad himself admitted that he was not sure about being a prophet nor was he sure about the Quran. And I'm going to tell you why. If you would ask the Muslim this question right here. Is the Quran the best knowledge that a Muslim can have? The answer to that question is yes. But in this hadith I'm about to read, Muhammad admitted that he was not sure if he possessed the best knowledge. And I'm about to read it. Can you bring? Can you pull it up on the screen, uh, brother? Ron, yeah. Well, how does it start, or what does it say, so we can put it up? Hey, um, you can type in the search box. You can type "Messenger of Allah." Hold it. That'd be too much. Um, you can type this. Uh, I hope I am the most God fearing. Mm. You can put that in the search box. Mm. Sona.com. Which uh <laughs> did it did it do, does it say does it say showing one of sixty-eight? Uh, let's see. I hope I am the most god fem. Does it does it say showing one of sixty-eight? Because mm. I can tell I'm getting a lot of uh results back. Just a second, I'm scrolling. Okay, I think you, I got it. Let's see. When you, is it from Sahih Muslim? Uh, okay, it's actually... All right. It's actually... Sahih Muslim 1110. Hold on, hold on. It's, it's the one that's um reported by Aisha. It's... uh That a person came to the apostle of Allah. Sahih Muslim 1110. Yeah, that one. It's on the screen. Yeah, that, that's, yes, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, they made says, even a typo here. Yeah, a bottle. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it says, yeah. um, it says, you want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Aisha reported that a person came to the apostle. Mr. Rob, Chris, I'm not looking at the screen right now, but. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no problem. It's on the screen. Go ahead. It's Don't the worry. one you're looking at. They spell apostle, A-P-O-T-T-L-E. Yes, that one. Okay, okay, this is the right one. Okay. It says, messenger of Allah. The time of prayer overtakes me as I am in state of Junu. Yes. Should I observe fast in this state? Upon this, the messenger of Allah said, at times, the time of prayer overtakes me while I am in a state of Junu and I observe fast in that very state. Whereupon he said, and this is talking about uh, Muhammad, mm -hmm. whereupon he said, 
Messenger of Allah, you are not like us. Allah has pardoned all your sins, the previous ones and the later ones. And this is when Muhammad is about to speak. Upon this, he, the unholy prophet said, by Allah, <laughs> by Allah, I hope, key word, hope, wow. I hope, yeah. I am the most God-fearing of you and possess the best knowledge among you of those things against which I should guard. So right there, you have Muhammad saying that he hopes he possessed the best knowledge. So that means he was not even sure if he had the best knowledge, yes. which is the Quran. But wait, wait, bro. Yeah. But wait, here we have a huge contradiction. Uh-huh. Why? Because if we go to chapter 53... Here, Muhammad is contradicting his own Quran. It says in chapter 53, verse 3 and 4, So, Muhammad does not say anything by his own desire. Everything that is, comes out of his mouth is nothing but divine revelation revealed to him. So here, Muhammad did a huge poo-poo contradicting the Quran. Right. I didn't. Yeah, that's another addition to it. Basically, right. guys, to the people who are watching, Everything Muhammad says, everything that comes out of the mouth of Muhammad is nothing but divine revelation. So when this is all of this is divine revelation and this is Sahih Hadith, Sahih Muslim, that means Allah himself does not know. Right, because they say that everything he says is of Allah. Yes. So right here, I'll, do, do you get what I'm, do the people get what I'm saying? They, I want them to really get Allah the, the main... himself does not does not know the best knowledge. He does not have the best knowledge, and he is hoping. Allah himself is hoping. Did you He's catch it, guys? Allah That's himself through Muhammad. Exactly. Right. He is hoping. It says, "I hope I possess the best knowledge." So this goes along with everything. This this latest argument about the Quran and do they have to preserve book? So from now on, we can tell them. We can show them this hard deep. And show them along with the um, what's that verse you just said? Chapter fifty-three, I have three and four. Chapter fifty-three, I have three and four. My friend, the people in the live chat are going crazy. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes. They can, I see actually, a lot of smiley faces, bro. I'm actually gonna do a video <laughs> on this on my channel, on my yeah. on the false prophet channel. Yeah. That's that's the name of my channel. So they want to subscribe, and I'll I'll go into depth with it, and mm. I will even. Thank you for including that verse because I wasn't even I didn't even I wasn't even aware of that. So that's mm. that's extra. Yeah, and Muhammad, everything that comes out of his mouth, I kid you not. This is why the Muslims call Muhammad the walking, talking, sleeping Quran. So everything that comes out of the mouth of Muhammad is divine revelation. So when he says, "I hope, I, I hope that I am the most God fearing." of you and I I hope that I possess the best knowledge among those things against which I should guard. So Allah is the one who's basically saying, I hope that I'm most God fearing. I hope. Wow. He Muhammad he, he Muhammad he exposed himself. Yeah. And the best knowledge is what? The mm -hmm. Quran, the words of Allah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. that's clear to me. Yeah. But it does yeah, I don't want to take too much time up, but uh I'll mm -hmm. leave my um I'll I'll leave a comment in the um the comment section. Yes, people are asking for your uh, YouTube channel, but I think that I see that our dear admin iPhone iPhone 3G already posted it. So okay. my friends, make sure to subscribe to this brother his YouTube channel, support his work, and thank you for calling, brother, brother Jacob. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank have you. a have a blessed day. You too. God bless you. All right. God bless. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Amazing stuff, right, guys? Amazing stuff. This is why last time when we were talking about the cross-dressing prophet of Islam, this is why we could use this against Muhammad in the court of law. Uh, brother, I don't want to waste my time again with you. Yeah, the same guy who, who called me earlier. Eh, waste of time, man. Let your uh, imam call me. Any other Muslims, guy? Any Muslim? <clears throat> Any Muslim? Any uh, other question who wants to call, guys? Yeah, I hang up your call, Omar, because you're a waste of time.
right? You're a waste of time. Every time I ask you the question, I need to repeat my question 10 times and still you don't get my question. You're a waste of time. Sorry, I'm not trying to insult but you're a waste of time. Call me another time, Omar. Call me another time. Call me another time. You know what, guys? Let us let us give him another chance. Let me give him another chance. But I'm going to ask him another question because you know, don't, so we should not waste our time. Just to be fair, guys. Yeah. Just to be fair. You listen me, yeah, that one. Yeah. You listen me, brother. Brother. Yeah, well, can you listen me? Yeah, I can listen you. Go ahead. Uh, before we talk about the basis of abolition of the one I used called cottage, yes. Yeah. I My friend, let us yeah. not let us not waste time. I have a question. Can you prove to us? Oh, and he hang up. Why you hang up, brother? I, I want to give you another shot, brother. Why you hang up, man? What's happening, brother? You listen me, brother. Told you, waste of time. Hello? Yeah, hello, can you? Yeah, I can listen to you. Go ahead. Talk yeah. to Anna, uh, before last uh, before I call you and the I hung one and the call hung up because my notebook is got bro I, I bro I hung up on you because you're not answering but forget about that I have a question can you tell us why Muhammad is a prophet why Muhammad is a prophet yeah why I should take my shahada because Allah mentioned in the Quran is a prophet Okay, that's book, it. In that's in it. The Bible, in the many my days. friend, listen, I can I can now write I can now write a Quran 2.0. And I can say Rob Christian is the the last prophet. Would you accept me as a prophet? Mama is the last prophet and the son of the prophet. No, no. I'm going to make now today. I'm writing a new Quran, and I say, I say, I. My name is Rob Christian. I am the last prophet after the last prophet. Would you accept me as a prophet? Thy sign can we? Thy sign we can see and we confirm you as the prophet. Okay, what is what is the proof that Muhammad is the first, a prophet? Guys, Michael, the first Michael of Muhammad is Quran. Okay, my 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 Quran 2.0 is a Michael bigger miracle. Muhammad is a Quran. Can you even Allah is a Quran to learn the people? My friend, listen. The I can make I can rewrite the Quran and remove the name Ahmed, <laughs> and I put there my name. I I call myself instead of Ahmed. I put there Rob Christian. So does that make me a prophet like Muhammad? Can you okay? Like like what um, you said, Muhammad is, is prove you wanna, it. prove what prove that Muhammad, Muhammad is prophet. Prove what made prove. Muhammad a prophet? Yeah. It what makes Muhammad a prophet? It mentioned in the previous book that it is a all lettered man that came in your book in the Bible from the Isaiah. It mentioned from the Deuteronomy. It mentioned what? Wait 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 Wait, Jesus. easy, easy, brother, 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 easy, easy. Which, and where, which chapter of the Bible? Can you go to the book? Of Isaiah Anna, book what? Of Isaiah what? Wait, wait, Isaiah, Isaiah? what? Isaiah? Yeah. Okay, let, let me get you into the book of Isaiah. Yeah, brother, do that, please. About and, and the when, we are, when we are at and it, I'm going, I'm going to show you that you are lying about your prophet. Is that good? Yes, yes, go, let's go. Okay, before we go there, okay? Yes. Do you do you accept your Quran? Yes, I accept it. Okay, do you believe it's from God? Yes, hundred percent. Okay, is Allah a liar? Allah, uh, Allah. is Allah a liar? Okay, I'll, guys, he said it. Auzu billah. So that means may okay, God I forbid. Okay, 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 wait, 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 wait. Before we go to what, Isaiah, what is Isaiah? Wait, 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 wait. Is Isaiah the Torah? Is that is part of your book? Is it the Torah? Accept, have you accept? Have you accept? Listen, Abdul, as a, Abdul, 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 brother, said, brother, listen, listen. All the book is Abdul, by the Abdul, listen, you listen, listen, that? listen. Is Isaiah? Is Isaiah? Because if you go to chapter seven, I have one hundred and fifty-seven of the Quran. It says that you have to find Muhammad 
in the Torah and the Injil? Is Isaiah part of the Torah and Injil? Answer. Why do I why do why do you try to change my topic? I say I No, I'm not changing. Listen, many, listen, Abdul, I, Abdul, Abdul. Um, chapter I'm seven. Not. Chapter seven, I 157 of the Quran says, mm. says, read it, open your Quran, please. Do you see the screen? Chapter seven. Chapter seven, I 157. 157. Open it. You got it? What chapter seven, Surah Al Araf. Ayah 157, 157. Yes. yes. Okay. What does it say? Read it, please. Those who follow the messenger, the only okay. second prophet, whom they find reaching is the one is the half of the Torah and the gospel. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Where yes. can you find Muhammad? Where? You can go to the book of Isaiah chapter 29. Abdul, listen carefully what the I say. Listen, Look, focus. Can you, can you, chapter can you, seven. Can listen. You wait. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. Chapter seven, I ayah one five fifty seven that you have in front of you. It says the one that you can find or mentioned in Torah and Injil is book of Isaiah. Okay. No. Just second, second. Wait, wait. No, you can't ask me. You can't ask me. Wait, wait, wait. Listen. I ask you. No, wait, wait. Listen carefully. Is the Torah, is the Torah, is the, is Isaiah, is it in the sight, the Torah or the Injil? Answer. What we ask Muslim, what is the original Torah? What is the original gospel? That five book of the Old Testament is not a book of Muslim. It's not Abdul, a book. answer the question. Don't, don't uh, do the monkey dance. I don't want you, I'm not asking you to dance for me. Again. Yes. It's Isaiah, because you said it's in Isaiah. Fine, I'll go I with you. you Isaiah. Is Isaiah the part of Isaiah. the Torah? Is That's Isaiah a part reason. of... You're a waste of time, man. Go ahead, man. Don't waste my time, man. Brother, guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. Brother, it's in the book of Isaiah. Okay, fine, I'll go with you. Do, do you see, guys, how he just called his prophet? And Allah liars because chapter 7 and I can go to other ayahs too in the Quran. It's not the only one, right? Chapter 7, ayah 157. Guys, you see my voice is gone, right? But anyway, no, no problem. It says that you can find this noble messenger, brother, Muhammad. Muslims say this is Muhammad. They are doing bid'ah, adding words to the Quran that you see here between brackets. It says... The herald of the hidden who is untortured, okay, from there you will find mentioned the brother in the Torah and Injil, brother. Fine, brother, I will go with you. Now, is Isaiah part of the Torah and Injil? The answer is no. Because the five books, which are the Torah, that were written by Moses, do not have Isaiah in it. Point number two, the Injil came after the book of Isaiah. So Isaiah is between the Torah and the Injil. So why are you calling a prophet and Allah liars and deceivers? Because they did not tell you to go to Isaiah. Isaiah is part of the Tanakh, not part of the Torah, and it's not part of the Injil. So my friend, when you go to the book of Isaiah, you're showing us that Muhammad is a liar, and Allah himself, who is talking, is a liar too. Thank you. Brada, Muhammad is in the book of Isaiah, brada. <laughs> Guys, uh, you know, I, we gave him a second chance. He's trying, at least he's trying. Brada. Isaiah, brada, brada. No, we cannot accept your call again, my friend. Because you are calling your prophet and Allah liars and you are not answering my question. This is why I'm tired with you, brother. Please send, stop sending me kids. Ya shuyukh, ya imams. Stop sending me kids who have no idea what they are talking about. Uh, brother keeper said, Rob Christian, I just came back. My Muslim friend is heated. I need a specific contradiction in the Quran. Okay, no problem. We can give you one. 
Are you, are you taking notes? My friend, are you taking notes? The one who asked me the question. Brothers keepers. Here is one. Chapter 5, Ayah 5. It says the following. This day, the pure things are made lawful for you. Let me give you give it to you in the live chat. Please save it. Chapter 5, Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 5. It says, this day the pure things are made lawful for you. And the food of the people given the book. Who are those? Those are the Jews and the Christian. So here Allah is saying, you can eat everything that comes from the Jews and the Christian, which is prepared by the Jews and the Christians. But wait, Christians, they eat pork. That's contradiction number one. Contradiction number two, it says, if we continue reading, so your food is, law, is lawful for them and their food is lawful for you. And likewise are the virtuous Muslim women and the virtuous women from the people of the scripture. So according to this ayah, Muslim men, I hope you're listening carefully my friend. According to this ayah, Muslim men can marry women from the Jews and the Christians. Did you catch it? But wait, if we go to another ayah, if we go to chapter 2, <clears throat> from Surah Al-Baqarah, the chapter of the cow, we, can f we will find a disaster. Watch. Uh, Uh, wait, 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 where was it again? Was it this one? Okay, here, chapter 2, I had 221. It says, and do not marry polytheist women until they become Muslims. Wait, in chapter 5 it says, you are allowed to marry, to have sex, right? It's actually saying to have sex with Jewish women and Christian women as a Muslim man. But in chapter 2, ayah 221, you are, you are not allowed to marry or have sex. Tenkahu, it means sex, not, doesn't, it does not mean marry, but anyway, let go. You are not allowed to have sex with polytheist women until they become Muslims. Why am I telling you this? Here is why. To, you know, back to back, chapter 5, ayah 5, chapter 2, ayah 221, let me give you this one too. And now... To bring down the hammer, let us go to chapter 9, all the way down, to show you the actual contradiction, as if that one already was not contradiction enough. It says here, and the Jews said, watch, including the Jewish women, right? And the Jews said, Uzair is the son of Allah. And the Christians said, the Messiah is the son of Allah. They uttered this from their own mouth. They speak like the former disbelievers. May Allah kill them. So since the Jews call Uzair the son of Allah. And since the Christians call the Messiah the son of Allah. They are, what are they? They are mushrikeen. This is why Allah is going to annihilate them. To destroy them. And not only that, we are also najis. This is why Christians and Jews are not allowed to enter Mecca. Did you catch it? So here we have a huge contradiction. Chapter 5, chapter 5, ayah 5. Chapter 2, right? Chapter 5, ayah 5. Chapter 2, ayah 221, back to back with 930 and 929 and 928. Bam! Did you catch it? So Muslim men are allowed to marry Jewish women Jewish Christian and women, so Jewish women and, Christ, and Christian women, according to chapter 5, ayah 5, but we are called Mushrikun, and you are not allowed to marry Mushrikun, because we call Jesus the Son of God. So we are associating partners with Allah, according to Quran. May Allah destroy us, says the Quran, right? May Allah destroy us for saying that. We are associating partners with Allah. May Allah kill them. May Allah destroy them. So here we have a huge contradiction. Oh my Allah. Why are you contradicting yourself? 
any Muslim who has the knowledge and the courage to refute me on this? Is there any Muslim who thinks he can refute me on this huge contradiction? I challenge you. If you can refute me, call me live on air. We are, we are live. You can call me on Skype. My Skype ID is the Europe Christian. My Skype ID is the Europe Christian. I challenge you. I challenge your Imam to call me and refute me. Yeah, and by the way, yeah, uh, someone in the live chat is saying, you made actually a very important uh, remark, my friend. Someone said, let me say who that guy was. <clears throat> uh, I hope I did not lose. The, the chat is going crazy, man. I can't fo follow it. It's so, it's going fast. Someone said, and how is, how is this Allah? How is this Allah talking, right? Is Allah saying, may Allah kill them? When we ask Muslims, the Quran is the speech of who? Muslims, without hesitation, they will say, the Quran is the speech of Allah. Fine, we will go with you. Is Allah saying, may Allah kill them? That doesn't make sense. So who is, one, who is the one talking here? Is it Muhammad? Is, the, is Muhammad saying, may Allah kill them? So it seems that the Quran is the speech of, not only of Allah, but also the speech of Muhammad. Yes, John Doe, this is stupid. Muslims say it's the speech of Allah. The Quran is the speech of Allah. So who is, who is the one talking here? So who is saying, may Allah kill them? Is Allah saying, may Allah kill them? Is Allah talking about another Allah? Is he talking to himself? To who is he talking? Disaster. Yeah, Allah is Muhammad, exactly. The Quran actually proves to us that Muhammad, when he was fabricating those ayahs, he was showing and proving to everybody who can read and understand that he is the one who is acting like Allah. Allah is Muhammad. Muhammad is Allah. I mean, the proof is in front of you. Who else is then saying, may Allah kill them? If, if, if the Quran is the speech of Allah. Who is saying, may Allah kill them? Tell me. I want to know. Is it Jibreel? Is it Muhammad? Is it Isa? Who is saying, may Allah kill them? Muslims will have to say, it's Allah. Okay, we'll go with you. So is, are you saying that Allah is saying, may Allah kill them? Wow. May Allah kill them. Yeah, no, third party. Yeah, who, so who is, who is the one talking? Even if you go to the chapter one, the first one. Is Allah saying, all praise to Allah? Is Allah saying, you alone we worship? So is Allah saying to another Allah, you Allah, we only you we worship? Is Allah asking for guidance? Is Allah saying to another Allah, or maybe to Muhammad? Allah is saying to Muhammad, uh, Muhammad please guide us? Or is Allah talking to himself? Is Allah talking to a different Allah? Who is Allah saying, please guide us on the straight path? Who is the one talking here? So who is saying this? Who is talking here? Now if Muslims going to say it means قُلْ say, Okay, show me the word say. I will, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can show me the word say. Where does it say that? Say guide us on the street. Okay, where does it say that? Does it say that here in the Arabic? No. So to, to who is Allah talking? No answer. I think Muhammad was doing poo poo and he was exposing himself here. Showing that Muhammad and Allah are the one and same person. So basically in a nutshell, if you are watching movies or cartoons or comics, Muhammad, let's say he is Bruce Wayne and his alter ego is Allah, Batman. Muhammad is Superman and his alter ego, Allah, is Clark Kent. So Superman and Clark Kent. So Allah and Muhammad and Muhammad and Allah are one and the same person. And the proof is in front of you. Chapter 1. Ayah 6. The Quran is nothing but a messed up book 
written by a man who exposed himself to the fullest. This is why, this is why we can conclude that Muhammad is a false prophet. This is one of the reasons why. Guys, <clears throat> my voice is gone. We are live for a long time. I know I love to be with you for many hours, guys. But we are live for three hours, 20 minutes and 35 seconds. My voice is gone. I'm tired. Uh, we had a couple of calls. That was nice. Uh, today we also barbecued Yasser Qadi. Right? We showed you from the Muslim source. We went to the Quran. We went to the Hadith. To expose this liar and deceiver. If you missed that, you have to rewatch the video. Make sure if you want to find the sources, they are also to be found in the same live chat that you are now typing in. You need to give YouTube a couple of minutes. It needs maybe 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes to process this video. So you can replay the live chat again to find the sources, to find the things that were mentioned in the live chat too, right? And you can also find the links or the sources that we used during the, today's teaching also in the comment section under this video. Our admins will provide the links. All right, guys. If you like our teaching and you want to use it, download parts that you like, cut them, download this video, cut the parts that you like, put subtitles in your own language and help those poor victims of this man-made cult. Help them, guys. All right, Christians, you have a job to do. God bless you. Thank you for your amazing support, guys. I love you in, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Make sure, guys, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Smash that like button if you didn't already. Also, you can... Uh, <clears throat> Don't call me, Abdul. You had your chance. We gave you two chances. So you can also subscribe to Facebook, my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Christian. And if you want to support our full-time ministry, you can do that on patreon.com slash Christian. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you. God bless you. God bless your families and loved ones. Muslims, I hope you benefited from the truth and nothing but the truth that we today we showed you. We went to the Quran. We went to the Hadith. And we spanked your prophet without any mercy and proved that he's nothing but a liar and a deceiver. He's a fake prophet. So if you care about the truth, Muslims, please drop Muhammad like a bag of dirt or sand and come back home to your Lord, my Lord, our Lord and creator, Jesus Christ. The name above all names. Please. Don't allow any Imam like Yasser al-Qadi to deceive you. They are nothing but liars and deceivers. And today we prove that. Yet again. Thank you for watching guys. I love you. Go with the priest of Christ. The name above all names. May Jesus Christ bless you. Your loved ones and families. And Lord willing. We will provide many live shows for you. And videos. I love you. Peace of Christ to all of you. God bless.